Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by my friend, my companion, my duo. Hopefully, he doesn't fuck it up this time. My man, Ben J. Nassim. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing good, Tom. Start off my day. Finally got fitted for those golf clubs. It's about fucking about time. For a minute. It's about time, Ben. So order, order those and then watch the great set of, of cotton matches, Tom. I think we have a lot to talk about. We got a set of four today and a set of five tomorrow. I'm excited. Going into the weekend, yeah, bro. The matches five here. matches tomorrow. I mean, yesterday took fucking forever. It, took, it, it was yeah. a long, long day. Of COD today was a long day as well. I mean, we had four yeah. matches today, so you know, we definitely had a lot of uh, COD to watch today. It all seems like a blur. The only thing I can remember right now is New York 3 0 Florida. Like, it was nothing. They fucking shit on these clowns, and we're gonna talk about it. But, um, Ben, just crazy matches. Crazy match. I heard you yeah. hit a bunch of golf balls today. I hit like 200 plus golf balls today. Oh, yeah, and how was that? It was good. I how mean, was, was just, how were you feeling? How was the swing feeling? I was, it was feeling good once we got the right club going. I was, I was in some nice shots, which is good. That's always good, Benny Boy. Yep. That's always good. But let's get right into it. We don't even need the wait, guys. Let's just get into the so into the show and let's get uh, into the game. Let's get into the news, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, we got Garrison Hardpoint Raid S and D Garrison Control Moscow Hardpoint Miami S and D to kick things off. We got Minnesota Rocker going up against the London Royal Ravens. Ben, your cam's all messed up, so I'm gonna fix it while you give your opinions on the vetoes. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward veto process, like the thought process from both teams. Um, I think it ended up favoring London. That's just how it goes sometimes when teams do vetoes. Uh, -huh. uh Tom, I think, you know, coming into the series and we talked a little bit, a little bit yesterday, like I think people are kind of underselling London's chances in this series. Uh -huh. They've been playing some really good COD lately. Yeah. I know that some of those wins weren't against well, the Well, who, who's underselling it? You're saying oh, you're saying the fans. Plenty of people I've seen on Twitter and Reddit and on the betting market. Just a lot of people were were not going with wet in the boys. Yeah. Uh, and so ultimately, I I predicted London yesterday. I think you predicted Minnesota in this series. Um. Uh, well, to be fair, I I wanted to go with London, but I wanted to go against you just to make things okay. more interesting. I said that yesterday. I I think London's been looking like the better team. Yeah. I thought Minnesota was going to be a lot better than what we saw today. I'm going to be honest. I didn't think well, it was going to be like that. I really didn't. And guys, please, can we stop putting fucking penises and nipples in my chat, please? Mods, I'm going to need you to be on your fucking A-game because we got people in here that are going fucking nuts. All right? So, but, so Ben, Tom, carry on. Let's talk about it because I want to give props to London before we get on the whole Minnesota thing. So, London now have been playing some really great COD with Zap. You and I, when they made this pickup, we're not fans of it. And I think we're pretty clear why. But ultimately, I think their chemistry, their teamwork has been really, really good. And we've talked about this year, especially in this meta. Wait, not fans of what pickup? Who? Oh, neither you or I were fans of the Zapdius pickup. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I mean... We can, I, we, can, we can be straightforward about no, that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I, yeah. I agree. We, we definitely were not fans. We had a lot to say about it, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, but ultimately, Tom, I, I think their teamwork right now is excellent. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit better at search. Like, I just like where this London team's going. They they are in a tough position. We have talked about the standings. They're at the bottom-ish now. And uh -huh. they have a good result here going to land. Yeah, they do. Uh, for, for Major 4 to be in a good position to get top 8. Uh, and ultimately today, I think they came out and played some inspired Call of Duty. Inspired? And yeah, inspired and, and fantastic Call of Duty. I like that. Uh, starting with this, this first map, uh, Tom, I really liked... Ultimately, it was a it was a tight one, and Minnesota kept it kind of <laughs> interesting with some good plays on the P1s mm -hmm. and on the P5s. Uh, but you know, as we've talked about a lot, um, you know, maximize your P2 time when you can. Uh -huh. And we've seen that P4 now with teams; they're getting some pretty decent holds now when they get that spawn trap going forward. I know it's been been a thing for a while, hey, uh, but up. I feel like especially in this two creek meta. It really fits the spawn trap when you get people stuck on the P3 side. Uh-huh, 100%. I want to give a quick shout-out to the New York subliners as they came into the stream. They dropped a big 10 bomb, and you know those are my guys. That's my squad, yep. so I have to give them a shout-out. So appreciate you guys coming in and showing some support to the stream. I love you guys, man, and big win today, obviously, from the guys. But we have a listening from the Minnesota Rocker. We're going to tune in and see how they sound, or listen to how they sound. Bertha, Bertha, Bertha. Go float. Bertha's dead, Bertha's dead. Check us out on the side. He's no show area. Dead, 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 dead. I'm on a fire. Bertha, guys. Bertha, Shawnee dead. I'm, I'm blocking, I'm blocking. I'm pushing up right okay. here. I'm, on, I'm, like, I'm close to Shriek's kind of. Okay. Okay. 
I got one. My very bottom. I'm on a streak. I'm trying to run away hey, from the back up. Help me, help me, you, help me. You. I'm coming, I'm coming. Someone get in the I'm on a streak. Check, I'm looking you. Pause spawn out minus. Pause spawn out minus. Is that dead at all? Yeah, I'm going to that. Two that are minus. We're missing two. I'm playing my streak. There's someone loading. Shot him loading. Shot him loading. I can't. One's you, you. You, 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 pull it. You, pull it. You dead. I got it. I'm in dark. I'm looking for Shani. Yo, break on me. Break on me. I got full streak. Break on me. 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 Back L zap, okay? Arch, Arch, dead! Back L zap! Marking L. I'm trying to hold green, I'm one shot. No one L. And L. I'm coming Arch again, Arch again, guys, Arch again, guys. On time, on time, right side down. Arch, 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 Arch. Right side mid, dead, one shot. Nice, zap L. I have bricks, I have bricks. I'm going for L. You can shot L. Guys, I have deep bricks. L, L, jump down. Well, it's fair to say that the Rockers. All right, Ben. Well, right off the rip, I mean, they have good comms. They they have one yeah, of those teams, today. right? I mean, th this is a team that's going to focus on comms. I mean, accuracy is always on point with his teams to make sure everybody's calm and to make sure everybody's, you know, doing the right thing on the map. But um, I know you have a, a few words to say about this Minnesota Rocker team, Ben. I, and I know you don't want to hold back today. So I want you to just say <laughs> how it is. What the fuck is the problem with this team? And why aren't they working? So. And I. I yeah. You, you want them to make a change. I know they do. So no bullshit in here. Just, just drop it on the fucking table. So Minnesota are kind of a tricky spot now. I wouldn't say it's mega tricky, but they're in a position now where the teams below them in the standings, and Minnesota's sitting at seventh, by the way, uh, may start to catch up to them in points. So all of a sudden, Minnesota, by getting top 10 at this major mm -hmm. and really only getting 10 points to show for it, they're going to have to have a big couple of results at the next two events and yeah. do well in the stages mm -hmm. and rack up this point so they're not sitting on seven or eight. Yeah. I think they're big issues right now, Tom. Um, one is just hard point looks abysmal again. Mm -hmm. uh, they just cannot seem to get it going in this game mode. I mean, it's and been I, looking like that. It's been looking bad. They had like a week or two where it was looking really one good. One week. They made a week up, of the honeymoon I, stage. Outside of that, it's been ugly. And like, I'm trying to look at stats and kind of figure out like and watch tape and see the chances of it. I think the big issue for them right now is just the lack of slaying out of accuracy. I think it's really hurting them in a lot of these situations and a lot of these team fights. Uh, and from my POV, I think at this point, I'd like to see them take a spin with Major Maniac. We know his teamwork's really good. He was a great teammate and did decent teamwork in Black Ops 4 when he was on that Gen G team. That was a top team all year. He was great last year on that uh, Atlanta phase team. I will be curious to see if Minnesota wants to maybe trial out a little bit with Mike and see if they play a little better in scrims. Uh, maybe they play it situationally, but I think that's something they need to address. I know Lamar brings a lot of leadership and intangibles. And he's a fantastic leader and has a really good eye for how to play the game correctly. Uh, just the slaying performance is not there right now. And we're seeing on a lot of these teams that you can't have your AR drop in. And right now I think he's averaging like a 0 0.8, 0 0.87 in stage three. Mm -hmm. uh, that's his final score. Like it's putting this team in a really difficult position. Yeah, I think Lamar can can be playing better than what he's been showing. I think he he has a lot more in the tank than than what he's been producing. But um, I mean, I would like to see some people, some maybe uh, bring Mike in. I, they definitely have Major Maniac still on the bench that's able to come in. I mean, that's the reason why they they still have him. I mean, he's there for good use, right? Um, but at the same time, yeah, Lamar does bring a lot of intangibles to a team. So I'm not really sure if they're actually gonna move, go ahead and do a team change. Like I'm not sure if they're really gonna go for it, but. I mean, they haven't been getting the, the performances, the placings that they wanted. Like, let's be honest. Like, they just haven't been seeing. Now, listen, they pick up Standy, and the team has looked much better. They have. Hey, I mean, they, they picked up, up Standy. They, they've been playing a lot better. Standy adds a lot of, um, what's the word, a lot of flair to this team. He adds a lot of pace. He definitely knows how to slay. He's young. He's cracked. He's, it's what you need for a team. But they're still not executing, and they're still not getting wins. So now you do maybe go back to the drawing board, see if there's any other changes you can make. Now, if they really, uh, depending on how their pa practices have been going, Ben, I mean, we don't sit in on the Minnesota practices. So the coaches obviously should be sitting in sitting in every single day watching these guys play. Yeah. And they should know exactly what to do with this team. Um, now, I don't know. Their practices have been, could be going really well. Like, they could be frying in practices for all I know. I really don't know, guys. I don't know if they're frying well, or they're getting smoked. Well, let's, talk about, let's talk about this. So Because that's also another thing, Ben, because, yeah. you know, sometimes, and you heard Scump say it the other day, right? Like, we don't stream our scrims anymore, and we've been frying in scrims every day, and then we go to the event, and, you know, a, 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 ba a bad day or two in COD, it doesn't work out for you, and, and you know, people are like, oh, they can say whatever you want about the team, but they've been performing in practice. But let's be honest, at the end of it, day if you're not performing consistently in these tournaments then you got to make a change or you got to try and make something happen if things are just not working um in terms of who to pick up i don't know the whole chat keeps spamming zinnisota um people definitely want to see zinni get I, on the I, team i don't i like zinn but i don't know if putting zinn on this team 
is going to give them well, as much of a plus as I think Mike would. Well, the problem is, is Mike is already there. Out. Yeah, they have to buy Zen out too, which is which is a tricky situation. Yeah, uh, for them, I think the one thing that Mike will help with them too, Major Maniac, is while their hard points also has been bad, their S and D has also been bad outside of really that Optic series. Mm -hmm. They're on a, a now three game losing streak in the game mode. Uh, if you go back to stage two major, they lost a bus bunch of S and Ds in that stage as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a mode that if they want to be competitive against the top teams, they've got to get better at. Yeah. Uh, and you combine the hard point S and D struggles, and it's just not a recipe to really win a lot of series. So they're gonna have to put in a lot of work. They're going to land now. Uh, they're gonna have some time off to kind of figure things out, but their margin for error is very thin, and they need to hope that teams like London and Florida and LAG don't, uh, you know, start making deep runs in some of these terms. I know LAG is out. And we'll talk about it later. Uh -huh. But the other two teams you mentioned, if they can rack up a lot of points, it's gonna put Minnesota under a lot of pressure to go to land and get good results. It's just weird too because they pick up Standy, and they did have that little flair of a honeymoon stage where they looked really, really good. Um, and I don't think accuracy is a bad player, but I mean, we just need to be honest you know we, we we keep it very straightforward here ben on the on the flank yeah i i um, like uh just just to say tom like i like lamar's lamar brings a we lot both to a do team. we both from do a leadership and and other perspective it, the slaying numbers for him have not been there all year and at, at some point they're gonna they're gonna have to do something to address that i don't mm. know if it's he's not being put in the right positions to make those plays or what have you, but you can't have your main AR drop below like a .9. It's really, really well, hard. Consistently. It puts a lot of pressure. Consistently puts a lot of yeah. pressure on your flex, flex and sub players to like be getting a lot of kills. If your AR is not getting those trades, it's it's very diff it's a very tough play style. Which is why I'm also curious to see how practices have been going for them. Um, because I feel like Lamar in the beginning of the year too did, was not playing bad by any means. He was playing good. He was doing his thing. So I feel like recently he's been in a little bit of a slump. I mean, we just call it how we see it, right? Um, he hasn't been dropping the numbers that we, we want to see him drop in. The team's been struggling. They got a top, what, they got 10th at this event now? They got a top 10 placing They're here? top 10. So yep. definitely with the, the caliber of players. I mean, Preston had the, the map of his life first map, and they still lost the map. It's just like stuff like that is unacceptable. I mean, he was going absolutely off. Um, and that's what you want to see out of your superstar player. So now it's just about executing, and it goes just back to the coaching staff. We'll see now what they end up doing moving forward. But, Ben, be honest with me. Do you actually see them making a change? I don't. See, this is a weird question. Because I don't. So I let's don't. Talk, let's talk about last year. Because I think we need to draw some parallels to last year, and that'll help this discussion. Mm -hmm. Last year... Hydra just dropped the they, resub, by the way. We got to give some love to Paco. Shout out, shout out to Paco. Absolute beast. Well, let's go to Waco in the chat. Let's but... <laughs> uh, I think like last year they were very slow to drop Goddard X, um, and I think it ended up hurting them because they never really got going after that, and they continue to slide. Mm -hmm. They're in a similar position this year. They're not. They they've fallen off. A lot of teams have jumped them. They're now seeing seventh of the standings. They're in a tricky spot because you know that Lamar can bring the leadership, especially when you go to land in the veteran experience. That's a big plus when you go into the pressure situations that they're going to face uh, at Major Four. At the same time, they can't go to Major Four and get outslayed and play the same play style uh -huh. and still struggle with these two game modes. And then you have a lot of pressure on major five. So they've got a very difficult decision. I'm very curious to see how they navigate it uh, in the coming weeks. I'm curious as well, because I just know, I just know how these teams are and I know how people in the scene work. Um, a little bit of shaky shots right there. Um, but it, I just don't see them changing for some reason. I feel like that team likes the team. I feel like they like each other. I feel like they think that they're good. They're just not executing in these tournaments. Now, um, do I agree with not changing? I think they should change. I kind of agree with you, Ben. I feel like it's just same consistent problems. I mean, I see the frustrations in their faces when they're losing. They just all look like they're fucking pissed off. It just looks like they're miserable. Now, listen, when you're not winning, things suck. Um, life is good when you're winning, and it, it really sucks when you're losing. So I know these guys are frustrated. I know they are, and it seems like they're losing. They're starting to lose their confidence a little bit. Um, it's just not looking good. It's not. So... They might need to experiment a little bit, and uh, again, I think it's a lot easier to say exactly what to do with the team if you're sitting in in practice every day and hearing the way they come and the way they play. Um, but I agree with you, Ben. I think something should happen, um, and you do have Major Maniac on the sideline waiting to go, and he is a great player. So we'll see how it all goes. But I also do think Zinni is another great player because, Ben, I don't know if you've been watching, but Zinni's on another level in this game. He's, he's, at, he's an absolute frying hey, 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 bro, you know me. I'm very realistic with Zinni. I've had my, my fair share of uh, bad words to say about Zinni in the past, about certain the way he played the game sometimes. He said some things about me. We went back and forth. 
I think he's incredible at this game. I watch him play every night. He's always streaming eights. He's yeah. always streaming scrims. He moves differently, bro. And, and he's definitely a good player in this game. I see a lot of people talking about it on Reddit. I see a lot of people talking about it on social media, like Twitter and in, in my chat, obviously. But we'll see. We'll see where these Minnesota guys end up going. I, but I just think it's going to be tough for them to make that move. It when probably you is. They have Major Maniac on the bench. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for them to make that. Like, getting Zinn off of Toronto is going to involve cash. Yeah, it's going to be that's, hard. That's, that's just, it's yeah, just yeah. tough. It's not, it might not work. It might yeah. not work. Um, but it's just something to throw out there because I think a lot of people do want to see Zinny in the league. And I think he is a really good player. And I do think he deserves to be playing. Um, I just feel bad for him, but did, honestly. But didn't Mike's team, Mike's on DT crew, didn't they make the finals of the Elite and they played Easter, I believe? Am I mistaken on that? Uh, like, I'm not Mike, sure, Mike's, honestly. Mike's, Mike's uh, Major Maniacs Challengers team has been playing really well. It's like him, what? Him, Phantoms, uh, Dylan Rex, and who's their fourth? Um, I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't you. remember. But they, um, but they were they were playing pretty good in the Elite. So I think Minnesota's got some interesting options here. Um We'll, we'll have Listen, to see kind of what they do. But besides but, the roster change, yeah. regardless, because on paper, this is not a bad roster. Accuracy attached, standing in priest is not a bad roster. What is the main problem with these guys right now? Do you think slang is just the, the number one thing? I don't, I don't Slaying is probably one of the reasons, and it might kind of explain why they've been, like, up and down in hard point, but, like, it doesn't explain their S&D struggles. And, like, they're playing a London team, and look, like, I, I've been, and you and I have been really high on London. They've been Pretty awful S and D uh -huh. uh, last couple of weeks, and they finally won S and D in this series. Uh, so I'm a little confused how Minnesota, who I thought on paper like the team that they had originally, right, uh -huh. accuracy, major maniac attached, and Priest, you're like okay, like pacing issues potentially aside with that roster, like they should be they should be gods S and D because all those players are good at search. Uh -huh. uh, and then they pick up Sandy, who I know is a good S and D player. They dropped Major Maniac, and then it's been kind of south, sir. It's super weird. I'll have to dig into the stats more and see, like, if they're blowing a lot of odd man rounds, if they're just not active on offense, if they're, gonna, if they're losing a lot of defenses. It's a little bit perplexing to me because I would think that this team would have a good understanding of how to play pro S&D, mm -hmm. but also have that ability with – I mean, you've teamed with Dylan and Preston before attaching Priesta. I want an event with those, them. Those, those guys know how to make plays and play – some really good, interesting, fast S and D, and like I don't know, maybe if they're they're not playing their system correct or what have you, but the search definitely needs a fix for sure. It, it, it might be a, a, a little again. This is what we said to the problem was you know, before they picked up Standy, right? The pacing and how they needed some pace on the team, and then they pick up Standy and they feel like they have that little bit of pace, but. When I talk about pacing, you can't just add a fast player and just be like, they're good now, right? I still think the pacing might be off a little bit. Honestly, you have Stanny, who's very quick. You have uh, Preston, who's on that AR role, who's probably moving a little bit quicker now, too. Um, and then you have Lamar, who's usually a slower player, right? I mean, he likes to pick his spots. A lot of people name spots on the map after him because he likes to play the same spots consistently consistently and then you have uh dylan who dylan's not like super hyper aggressive but i think dylan's a really good player um i wouldn't touch attach i would i would definitely keep him on the team but i definitely think getting on the same page right now is their biggest issue i feel like they're not on the same page they might have different ways of playing the game or they do or or they are playing the game the way they want to play and they're just not executing they're not slaying like you said um and if you're not slaying that's when you have to try and maybe bring in some other people that maybe can can just perform better um it, it really just it's just that simple um, and at the end of the day, I really don't know if I actually see Minnesota changing. But on the other side, Ben, I also want to talk about London a little bit. Because, yeah, these guys picked up Zap and we had, uh, you know, some things to say about it. But, bro, these guys look like they're on another level. And I think it's because Zed, he comes on the show. I think because yeah, Zed I mean, comes we'll, on the show, we'll, it's giving we'll, him good we'll luck. That. We'll tip that. What's in the chat? Let's I get some what's in the chat. I, Come on. I think for London, they're actually in an interesting spot because, you know, they won this series. I think they play, what, Thieves next who haven't been looking, like, in top form in the last, like, week and a half or so. So that's a very winnable game for London. Uh, and then who do they yeah. face next? I think Toronto right is on their side of the bracket. I mean, yeah. that'll be a tough one. But you've got some interesting storylines with those two teams. I know they're they're both friends. So, uh, like, London can backdoor a nice top six here, which they really, really needed on the points. Mm -hmm. And then kick it off from here. And maybe when they go to land, get in their top six, top four. And if they can generate some momentum, we saw this with Toronto last year, generate some momentum going into champs, they could maybe figure out their S&D issues and become a real contending team.
Yep, no, 100%. I'm just very impressed. Not just by the talent that... Bro, when you look at this this team on paper, Ben, you're not, like, starstruck by talent. Like, you see Zap. Zap's kind of been around for, for a while, but he looks great, honestly. Like, Zap was a good person to pick up for this team. Yeah. I just feel like he's meshing really well. I feel like the chemistry, maybe, between him and Paul X is just really good. Zed has been playing great. I mean, Zed's just making plays. The comms that he brings to the table sounds great. Whenever they go into listenings, it just sounds like he's small talking. He's always trying to set things up. Shawnee's always been a fucking rock on the map. You've yep. always been a big fan of Shawnee, Ben. You talk about Big Shawnee, Shawnee a lot. He just plays the game really, really good. Um, he, he's a very fundamentally sound player, and he just knows how to play COD. He's been playing for a really, really long time. And then you got their fucking superstar, baby, Paul X, because this guy can play. Um, you see it in his gameplay, the eye test. I don't even need to look at the fucking stats. I watch the map, and whenever whenever they're on his POV, I could just tell that he's nice. I could just tell. They they just have a really good they just have a really good set of players that fit their system, and the roles work perfectly. Paul's a pretty good third sub when they need it. Mm -hmm. Zed is their route guy, as you touched on. Zap's their front line, and mm -hmm. Shawnee is their really good solid main AR. It just kind of all works together. Yep. I agree. The talent is not going to be as good as some other teams. But as we're seeing right now, a lot of the teams that may be more talented than them are really struggling with the teamwork part. So Tarani to maximize this window, really hone in on the teamwork stuff, get better at searching, you know, they can use that to their advantage and, and start making ground now because they need it in order to get top eight. Yeah, a lot of people were, were mentioning Ninja Diffuse in the chat. A lot of people wanted to see the Ninja Diffuse. You know um, what round that was? Uh, not exact. I don't remember the exact round, guys. You, I don't know if people, people know in the chat round, I remember. Exactly yeah, yeah. We, we didn't write that one down, but it was a it was a cool ninja diffuse. I mean, it's always cool when you see ninja diffuses. People are saying three. People are saying oh, yeah. three or I'll four. Go, I'll go back. To we can pull it up round. for you guys if you guys want to see it. It was definitely a good play. Um, I'm a big fan of ninja diffuses. I feel like it's just something that people don't expect, and we see it time and time again. We see, it. bro, Neptune went for it against New York today. The ninja diffuse where you crawl. He tried to yeah, pull a tried. pristini. Um, and it just didn't work. It's just so cool. It's so funny to see so many pro players try and just crawl to that bomb and try and pull up a ninja defuse. But when a ninja defuse is actually pulled off the right way, um, it's fucking lit. It's lit. Somebody's spamming round four in all caps. He seems like he's super confident, but we'll see here. He's ben, if you wanna if you wanna fast forward, who's that? Tommy! Zinny! And with a 14 month resub. I see you, Zin. I on, see you, you kid. How listen, you doing, I just wanted Zin? to stop by. Um, what do you mean stop by? You're gonna come in here for a minute and dip out. Tom, listen. Here's the issue, right? What's when the, the matches go super long, like, cause usually I hop on the flank for like, I like the whole thing. Usually I'm here for a while. Yeah. But that's cause matches are over earlier and I have time, right? Now they end so late that it's like if I were to stay on the entire show, I wouldn't get any play time in. Yeah. No, so 100%. It's, you so gotta it's, play, it's, Zin. You it's, got it's other priorities. Harder. Yeah, we got eights coming up. I mean, listen. I just wanted to come by and say thanks for the gas. Um. Oh, yeah, you deserve I it. Want, I also want to defend accuracy because, uh, I mean, I think Lamar is sort of like me in the sense that the stigma around our name is no matter how well we've played, mm -hmm. has always been negative. Like, Lamar shit, Zinni shit. He sort of had that same curse that I've had. Mm -hmm. And Lamar, like, I feel like every time Lamar has a great moment, it's like, it's talked about for a second. But as soon as he starts playing a little below average, it's just people go nuts. So, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's one I mean, of those I things. He hasn't been playing. That, he, he hasn't been playing the best as of recently. He's definitely been in a little bit of slump. He started off the year. This is what I said in, when I was talking about. It. He did start off the year good. I mean, Lamar was playing really, really good. But Zin, this team is just clearly not working. And and the thing is, is is who would you change if you had to change somebody from Minnesota? I mean, who's it going to be? Um, and if you don't change, then fuck it. Don't change. Just keep throwing them out there and see what they can do. But it's not working. I mean, they're consistently just falling apart. Are they not? Yeah. And okay. that's and that's the only reason why it's tough. Like it's really tough. I mean, I know Lamar. I team with Lamar. I think he's, uh, you know, I like Lamar. I think he's a good player, and I think he brings a lot of intangibles to a team. But who else do you get rid of? I can't. You can't get rid of Standy. He's a superstar. Priest has been hitting form. He's another superstar. They're not can't, dropping Dylan. Definitely not dropping Attach. He's been one of their best players all year. So the odd the odd man out. It comes down to Lamar, and that's what I said. It comes down to the coaching staff and how they've been performing in practices and stuff like that. Because I think highly of, of accuracy, but he just hasn't been performing as the accuracy I know. So we'll see. I mean, we can just say it how it is. This type of team. London has been playing well, but if you were to stack these rosters up against on uh, on paper, Minnesota should never lose to this London roster. Mm -hmm. Period. Like especially they shouldn't. With, they shouldn't. Because I mean, there was a time where I think at least some of us were talking about Minnesota being a top four, top five team, and now it obviously hasn't been uh, looking as good for them. And obviously, this map, this match was 
tough because I think first map I, I was well, I couldn't believe this. Let's talk about this situation, Tuzin here, because this is a ninja diffuse, and then we'll this we'll was wrap fucking. Up I tweeted after yeah. this. I, if you saw my tweet, I tweeted, "What am I watching?" It was after it was a three v three with fifteen seconds left, and the guy somehow got a ninja diffuse. I've never seen something like it. My monitor would have went through my teammate's head. <laughs> Definitely would have went through. I, I don't know how this was even a thing. It was one of those things where he hopped on the bomb and they were looking over him, so they were scared to peek. Um, and he just hopped on the bomb. I, I'm really surprised they didn't get eyes on it, but just a good heads up play. Honestly, it was probably Zed just saying, "I'm hopping on this bitch, look over me," and that's just pretty much just how it went. But um, going back to the whole Lamar thing, I see a lot of people talking about Ramadan in the chat, and that's another thing. I mean, I know Ramadan's been like a serious thing, right? Because people aren't eating. Um, Asim's been going through the same thing, and I know it's been difficult for him, and but he's uh, been performing. Hold on, hold on. I, the Ramadan thing is, I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off about the Ramadan thing, because I agree that it's obviously a very tough thing for it's very the, tough. the Muslim players. You can't drink water. Like that, yeah, just imagine that's, that. That's, like you can't I mean, that's a serious problem. But, but here's, my, here's my thing about accuracy, is right now, for the season, he's averaging a .94, and I, I just, I know that he's had some, some good series. He's played well in S&D for a majority of the season, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But they're in a position right now where their hard point record has been abysmal outside of like a week and a half of COD. And they're going to have to start getting better at that respawn game mode if they want to have a shot in some of these top teams. And it sucks because I really think that Lamar brings a lot to the team from a leadership perspective, from from really dictating how the team plays and knowing how to play the game correctly. He's always had a good eye for it. Mm -hmm. But unless he can figure out how to get another like three, four, five kills a map, like they are consistently putting themselves in harder positions to win if he's going to be out there dropping a point nine. Well, we'll see. I mean, I mean, bro, it's like I said, I personally think they need to change. And obviously he seems like the odd man out. But at the same time, I don't know what the problems are. Like if they go back and watch matches, I don't know if the problems come down to them not getting kills or to them making really dumb mistakes. And I mean, that comes down again to what I said before. Just let the coaching staff handle it and see if they actually pull through and, and make a change. But in terms of slang power, I think they could definitely upgrade in the slang power uh, you know, sense of things. Like what you said, Ben, I, de I definitely agree with you. Um, it just gets tricky. It just gets tricky because the team on paper looks great and it's just not working. So it's a it's a difficult situation that you that you're put into if you're oh, the Minnesota 11 guys. Eleven and twenty two in hard point, which this is year. terrible, terrible, awful. It's not good. They're uh, they definitely need to pick up in that game mode, and you play two hard points a series, so you definitely don't want to see that. And right, it's hard for me to talk about Lamar because like I like Lamar. I've teamed with Lamar. I think he's a good dude, and I think he's a good player. Um, it's just one of those things where it's like you got to be realistic on the show, um, and that's just how it is. Uh, All they right, boys, listen. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're Coming good, Zinni. I want to say Zoom Mafia, my boys, my people. Uh, enjoy the show, guys. Thanks, thanks again for the gas. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I got you, bro. Uh, I'm fucking diffy in the game. It's just that simple. <laughs> but, um, you are, bro. You've been, you've been playing well. You've been playing really well. just simply different. I, I, I go on Reddit, and I read names that aren't mine, and I'm just really confused. It's like, do you watch the fucking game, Timmy Phantoms? You out of your fucking mind. Hey, oh, hold on. Don't disrespect Timmy Phantoms. Why don't disrespect Timmy. Hey, Timmy. I'm not disrespecting Timmy's anybody. But stuff. A, I'm, not, I'm not disrespecting anybody, but, like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Timmy, Timmy's good stuff, man. He's good fucking stuff. Let me tell you. Um, That's like Timmy Slander in here. But, but Zin, I appreciate you coming in, bro. Appreciate you coming in and uh, showing love. And I appreciate you keeping the sub train going with your resub. You're a of real course, friend. Of course. Peace, brother. Later, bro. Peace, guys. Um, um, I think uh, not really much to talk about in this control map. London won, the first, yeah. London won the, the first round. I mean, we'll just skim through it real quick. We'll get to the last round. Like, it just, it just um, a really solid performance today out of London in a series that they really needed to start generating some momentum in this major for them. Uh, and I'm excited to see them play Thieves tomorrow. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. Uh, we will probably see z most of zero checkmate in that series. And that'll put London on some maps where I've they've been playing like some pretty good cards. Like we might see a uh, Moscow Hardpoint tomorrow. Um, some interesting S and D's, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a raid. Like I just think London can keep this going against Thieves. I don't know beyond that. It might be a little tricky against Toronto, and then whoever comes from the other side of losers. Yeah. Uh, but if they can get through tomorrow and get the top six, like that is a huge W for them. Yeah, and, I, and I think the the key thing about London right now is their momentum. I just feel like they have so much momentum right now. They're so confident. It just feels like they're a well oiled machine. They're honestly, I just enjoy watching them play because I think they are really good players. But I think the main thing that's really separating them from a lot of these teams from four. We talked about it yesterday in, the, in yesterday's show, Ben. How teams four through twelve, anybody can beat anybody. 
Um, and the one thing that separates these London guys is their teamwork. They just seem like they're all on the same page. I mean, even the Ninja Diffuse, right? Just Zed hopping on the bomb and everybody looking over him. It's just like little quick decisions like that. That's where London's thriving. And I feel like that's why they're a tough team to beat right now. Um, and then on the other side for Minnesota, we'll see what happens with them. If they end up sticking together, we'll see if they can turn things around. If they end up replacing somebody on the team, we'll see if that ends up helping. But um, at the end of the day, we'll see what Minnesota Rocker decides to do over there in their camp and uh, see if they make any changes, Ben. Yeah, you want to hop over? Let's talk about the Optic LAG series. Oh, yeah, we can move on over. We got Optic Chicago going up against Los Angeles Gorillas. And, Ben, we had a really good one here. We start off with Garrison Hardpoint. Then we move on to the Moscow S&D, Raid Control, Moscow, Hardpoint, and then uh, Express S&D. Listen, man, Optic, and, and this is the problem with, with, with a lot of people, or with a lot of things that I'm reading, Ben, is a lot of people are just saying, yo, Optic, you know, they should be blowing this team out of the water, this and that. LAG is no fucking joke right now. They actually look like they're playing really, really good COD. Yeah, they're playing some good COD. Optic kind of rolled the dice in this series. It's been an ongoing meme on the show. Don't play LAG on raid control. Optic took the risk, and they played well on it. And look, I got to give Optic credit today. First map looked like an absolute disaster for them. Mm -hmm. And they were able to rebound and win the next three maps. Win a hard point and kind of end their slump in that game mode. Uh, they won a very difficult grind out S&D. And the raid control, it looked very good. Like, I think for Optic, this is a series they needed to generate a lot of momentum. They have a very tough matchup tomorrow against Dallas. There's a lot of emotion on the line. Both both teams know each other well. There's the, the storyline of the Optic guys versus Krim. Yeah. And for both teams, like, and I don't want to get too far ahead on this series because we'll loop back, but ultimately that's a series where uh, the team that loses that series is going to feel pretty terrible and the momentum is going to be kind of over for them. And then uh -huh. the other team's probably going to go on a little bit of a run. Yeah. Uh, and then and then tell me you want to talk about like your thoughts on LAG in terms of how they played in season it's three? Just, it, listen, it's just their teamwork. Like they they definitely just look like they're finding their form a little bit. Now you want to see them execute and start getting some more wins under their belt. Um I don't know exactly what place they're in right now, Ben, with everything as everything's unfolding. Um but I know they're on that cusp, right? Like they're sitting around that eighth or ninth spot. So these matches are really big for them. Um, They're one, at ninth right now. One person I really just want to point out is Chino. I mean, this guy's just playing good Call of Duty. He's just very f fundamentally sound. He's a great player. And I feel yeah. like he's really helped this team um, with his energy, his hype, his positivity. He's helping getting these guys on the same page. And again, I, I can't say this uh, enough. That stuff matters so much. I mean, I played competitive. I played professionally for eight years, right? That stuff really matters. When you have a teammate on your team who's positive, he's always bringing people up. He's coming in. He, he, it's just like, it's just a whole change to the team. It's a whole change in energy. Yeah. And, and clearly with Vivid, right? Vivid is an amazing player, probably one of their best, if not the best, when he was playing with them. But something just wasn't clicking for them. And now I feel like Chino might be the glue. He might be the glue to the Chino, team. Chino's playing fantastic right now. He's, and... he's dropping good numbers. Tom, can we talk about the situation? Because I think we need to do a little bit one-on-one -on -one here on why this spawn happens. Mm -hmm. Go uh, ahead. Break so, it down. So for those listeners at home, we're going to talk about the P3 spawn here where, where um, Scump does not block the back on P3 and then all the LEG guys spawn out. And I want to focus on sort of how the situation sets up. Mm -hmm. For folks that maybe haven't played this map a lot, or watch it a lot. This spawn is very sticky. You got to be back here to block it. Because if you look at and on stream, we can talk about it. The total bottom right of the map is like that deep, deep, deep spawn. And if you push out garage, which what what Scump does, and your team is all the way across the map and is not blocking elsewhere, mm -hmm. and LAG's holding their cams, they're gonna spawn there. Yeah, that has happened so many times. It's it is something a lot of teams figured out in the first couple of weeks. And I think Scump maybe there's just some miscommunication. Maybe he thought some team his teammates were coming back towards P3 in time. You see number seven envoy he started getting in that mix. But ultimately, he just, um, just miscommunication is bad, and they just spawn back there, and it sort of spirals for Optic at this point. It, it is a sticky spawn, and that's why you see a lot of people just staring at it. Let's yeah. let's let's cut right to the chase, though. The spawn is fucking fugues. That's a fucking stupid ass fucking spawn. It's been like that since the beginning of the game. But though. I'm not saying that. I'm yeah. not. I'm not saying that he. he like, listen, he definitely should have known the spawn was coming. Um, and and he definitely should have looked really at it. He's not blocking anything by pushing out garage. Though. I don't. I don't agree that Fugues like Scump wasn't. You don't agree. You don't agree. That spawn sucks balls. What the fuck Scump is that? Scump is in garage pushing out garage. It's I, not yeah, like he's I, in I the back of the spawn. I, no, no, I understand. No, I mean, like d if, d he's in the back of the map, Ben. He's in garage. The garage should easily block that back spawn. It should. Um, the, the, but the problem is, is it doesn't, and he should know that. And I, and it's, it's been like, I mean, I could see the wisdom in that, but like, 
it, it's been like that since the beginning of the game. They're like not going to fix it because it because every team basically like rotates their early. Someone sits on the van. You're watching the push through vents like teams rotate their early and like that's how you're supposed to play it. Yeah. Um, I also think the optic did a bad job of just dying on rotation like you, especially in rotation to P3, you need to get in the back and hold as a team and not die. Because uh, it's a money yeah. hill coming off of P2, and three of his teammates die on rotation. They're all running across the map because they're spawning old. Uh -huh. It was just a, a mixy situation. Now, LEG got to spawn in the back. They got a majority of the time. And LEG were able to then front run this game particularly well and give themselves a 1 0 lead in the series. Listen, guys, you guys are spamming Len in the chat. I mean, Ben's not wrong. Like, teams do know that how sticky that spawn like is a, and that it's like a day one it's, it's like a, a week it, one or week yeah, two yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's like it, it, it's one of those things where yes i think the spawn is fucking fugues and it just shouldn't be a thing but the problem is is it is a thing so you need to you know mark that one down and it probably won't happen again to these optic guys i mean they're gonna go back and watch it and, and see and they're just gonna make sure every single time now they have that shit blocked um, they should have had it blocked already. I mean, we're, we're pretty far into the game now, but a little bit of a miss up. They, they fucked up. Um, they didn't, was, I, I think it was scum just didn't block the spawns and they, and they spawned behind them. Uh, what are you going to fucking do? Uh, the, but the, regardless, the spawn is fucking horse shit. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm surprised it's even a thing. Um, but what are you going to do? And plus let's, everything uh, was blocked. Go, let's go in this lesson and let's see how optics Yeah, let's see how optics come and let's do it. I'm watching every time. Absolutely. Yeah, he dipped. He dipped the P2. I'll see if small. Backside time. I got a pause, Tom. What's going on here? What the fuck? Are you okay? You got to clear your throat? Yeah, like this whole situation, I didn't even catch this the first time I watched this map. I mean, I don't know what they're sitting well, around like, for. They need yeah, to hit some go say, buttons. Like, they they get, need they to hit these... some go buttons, guys. Like, dude, okay. This, uh, I don't know what's going we're, on we're here. We're watching P P5 on Garrison right now, and this spawn trap, like we've seen it all day today, is a brutal spawn trap. If you get in their bricks and you got them spawning tank, like, like this is an impossible like situation to break, especially with the skill of optic. Mm -hmm. And they get a lot of these kills. They literally get three of the four kills, and they're so worried about this guy in bricks, Chino, who's got an AR. And they don't push. I would love to see Dashy just flying his side bricks here. I mean, they're not even soaking time. Yeah. They're not, they got off the time. They got off the time and they're holding pre-aims. It's like, I don't know if the, I don't know if whoever was on time was weak or, or I don't know what the situation was. There could have been a reason he got off of it. But they just kind of just stood around. I mean, Envoy made the play. He got into their bricks. He got a kill or two. Like, he pinned them back in their spawn. I mean, that's when the aggression should just be piling up, up for Optic. They should be getting in their faces. They should be getting map control. They should be holding their angles. Like, I don't understand... Oh. Yeah, I, I, also, I just don't understand what they were what they were doing right there. I don't I'll get say, it. say, Tom, is they were playing scared in that situation, but I want to give Optic a lot of credit. After map two, they stopped playing this way. They look like they were playing some free flowing COD in maps three and four, mm -hmm. and that's the way they need to play. Yeah, they've got a lot of skill on this team. They need to get God Dashy flying and getting into positions and making plays, mm -hmm. envoy hitting routes, and setting up Scump to be your frontline guy who's just going to absolutely smoke the other team. Yeah, and that's uh, why and I work. Yeah, go, oh, go ahead. ahead. No, my bad. I no, thought you, you were done. Ahead. I was just gonna say that's why I worry about this optic team because I wonder if a confidence if there's a confidence problem right now with their team. I'm happy that they turned it around with the rest of the series. Um, because the, the thing is, is like a team like this, and this is going back to what I just said ten minutes ago. The energy and the vibes and the confidence and people having fun out there and just like feeling yourself like that's so such a big part of the game. Like if if they're not confident right now, it's gonna hinder their gameplay. Um, granted, they kicked up the next few maps, but they are playing LAG, right? So you you're gonna want to see them do this against top teams, and it's not gonna be easy by any means. So and their their every spawn record against top teams, I don't know what it is now, but it was like they had only won like four or five respawns against top teams. Uh huh. They're gonna play Dallas tomorrow. They've got to start improving that record. Start showing up against some of these better teams. If they can get this win versus Dallas, I feel really good about Optic's chances uh -huh. in the rest of this major. If they Big lose win that tomorrow. series and they finish top eight this major, like it's going to put a lot of pressure on them to figure it out in the next two stages. Yeah, yeah, no, they definitely. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a big win for them. Uh, going up against Dallas, it's not going to be easy. They're going up against a hard roster. Um, they took down a good LAG team. Listen, I see a lot of people bitching about optic and how they're playing lag and that it shouldn't have been this close i think that's fucking for LAG's, LAG's i think i think lag's been playing great guys and we i talked think... about on the show yesterday tom that we thought this was going to be a close series lag is a team that's in way better form than optic is yeah yeah and, and and the thing is is optic came out today 
and they won three to one. And I, I, I listen. We could say whatever we want about this first map. There's definitely some things that caught our eye, but I agree with you, Ben. They definitely turned the series around, and they definitely started feeling themselves a little bit. They got their rhythm back, and that's what they needed. Honestly, they needed a series like this. They needed a team like LAG that they can just put down. And now they go into tomorrow with a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence, and let's see if they can keep it rolling. Honestly, because you know players like Scump and even Dash in for right when these guys they get hot, Ben. They're they're ready to go. When they're feeling themselves and they get hot, that's when they get scary. So, you just want to see them build some confidence. But then we go into a Moscow S&D, Ben. And this was a huge map for Optic. Because if this went all the way down to the wire, round 11, and if they would have lost this and went down 0-2, I think this series would have went 3-0 LEG. Well, they, they, they almost 5-3 through. Uh, but they, they clutched up round 11 and they used that momentum. So, I'm like, we're going to kind of play from round 5 on. A couple of different things I want to talk about. I think both teams can go back and watch this map and kind of lose full. Uh, for Optic, again, this this A corner here has been, like, an issue for them all the last, like, month and a half. Just nothing good can happen when they get in that stack setup. Uh, and this is the start of a little bit of a run from LAG. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip round six. Um, I thought there was a play in round uh, seven. There's a, there's, I'm going to actually skip to round eight. There was a play in round eight. I thought uh, LEG probably could have done a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, skip through. I got Saint yeah, to the chat some... saying you got to think. I don't know if he's trolling us or not when he says the Optic just needs to find their groove and they'll be good to go because we do say that a lot. So I don't know if he's trolling or not. But at the end of the day, it's true. I mean, with a team like Optic um, and, and just looking at what they have on paper, if they just play. No, nah, I'm not 100%. Okay, you're not trolling. I thought you were being sarcastic. I thought you were trolling us, bro. I thought you were fucking trolling us. Because I do think that's that's actually just, like, the problem. I think they, they need to find some momentum and some confidence in their gameplay a little bit. I've struggled with it through my career sometimes where there was times where I felt more confident than others. And uh, it definitely hindered my gameplay. Like, when I was really confident, I played the best COD. Um, so it's just, it just is how it is. I mean, having a good mental state is, like, the number one thing in, in playing professional Call of Duty. And I think a lot of pro players will say the same thing, guys. Um, if your head is in the right space... Um, you're you're gonna fry um, and I think right now as a team Mentally optic has been struggling, but I feel like they're they're finding that groove and like I said They needed this series Ben. They needed they this. really need this series. So I want to talk about this situation um, I thought LG did a lot of really good work to get a first blood in this round by killing dashi So the B B bomb side was pretty open. They let envoy piece them here um, Teamwork between silly and Apathy was a little bit off here um, maybe would have liked to have seen and, and Tom you probably noticed it like um, Just maybe hit some slides. I know the jump child is like really good right now But ultimately like the, the jump basically didn't really set up a good bait for silly um, I was able to piece uh, They do end up kind of forcing this into a 2v2 very quickly, but then it becomes a 1v2 I mean and ulti ultimately like you just don't get a really good uh, setup here uh, and it's kind of a missed opportunity for LAG. They did a lot of good work to kill Dashi on that B bomb site, but they were never able to really get the bomb down. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about a slide out. I mean, maybe a little jiggle. Give it a little peek. Give it a little jiggle peek. Yeah, just, slide, just like a just a wide I mean, slide. If, but, 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 if, but, if, but if you wide slide out, I mean, there's just so many areas where he could be. I mean, he could be. They could be closet. They could be by street. They could be back door. They could be behind the bomb, playing it off. I agree. Then, it, then it, shoulder it, it, just throw, they, out. they should shoulder it. Throw some yeah. shimmies and try and get some information. And then once they get the information, then you slide. Chat. Then you try and camera win a gunfight. Well, Somebody comes in for a trade um, back and forth. Um, they, so, they, listen, Tom, they killed Dash user B player. Like, they know that unless, like, Optics called some crazy hard counter, there's maximum one guy on the bomb site. Uh, they just ended up getting peace there, and it was a missed opportunity. Now, I got to give LG credit. Starting in round uh, nine here, they do a good job clawing this back. But uh, ultimately, you know, it's a little things for LAG. Man, can I ask you a fucking yeah, question? What is with you and this fucking word? Ultimately, what? did you just add this I'm into on, the? I'm the, ultimately the, giving recently. Just, you're on just, a big fucking. With, I like the wobbly yeah. better. I'd rather you go back to the fucking wobbly. <laughs> Don't yeah. fucking ultimately, uh, ultimate. Listen, I fucking love you, but Ma, don't you say this word every fucking day, fucking twenty five times a day. But continue. Uh, so this is a weird round. I'm silly. That was a that was a tough situation yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, we got but silly in the chat. We got silly in the chat, guys. App, that app does a good job getting the trade here. Okay, three v three. No harm, no foul. Um, and do a good job of sort of grinding this round out. I'm going to skip a little bit ahead as Optic work this towards the B bomb site. Nice little pick from Chin on Dashi. And then LG just do a good job of playing this TV2 situation. Um, it becomes kind of a little bit mixy. Optic ends up wrapping this to A. Um, and then, uh, you know, really good trade to the LG here to make this a 2v1. If we're, but see, see I, don't, I don't get yeah. this either, though. Like, 
It, it, again, like, they make it a 1v1 situation. Yeah, and Apathy ends up winning it. But even when they get the bomb down, like, why don't Scump and Formal just, like, well, get together that, and push something uh, out together? Like, that, we, this this went south because they were just, they, they solo child. I mean, Formal's looking at something by himself. Scump's looking at something by himself. LAG's gonna stick together in this 2v2. They're gonna stick together. They single out Formal, make it a 1v1 situation. They clutch up. Where if they just stayed together, this could have, they could have ended the map. They could have ended it right here. They I don't, could have ended I don't it. even think it's beyond that. Like, we've seen a lot of teams in these these 2vx setups on this bomb site plant for outer. And I feel like that would have been the better play for Optic here because then they would have had all bomb site control. You know, you can finesse on those stairs. Ultimately, yeah, I agree. They just they, they made a safe plant because they probably weren't really sure where uh, LAG was and ultimately didn't play together. And Formal ended up kind of losing this 1v1. Like, right here, right here, like, if Scump backs up with Formal. Formal gets a kill, he goes down, Scump gets to trade on app. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. the whole point. Like, work with each other. Like, work off one another. There's another round where Envoy just hit Outer by himself and just died, and nobody's even there. Everybody's just sitting back preaming. It's like they're on different pages. It's like their small talking yeah, is off. Timing for Scump right there. And, and listen, they won the map. They won it, but it got scary. They're down 0-1. LAG brings us back to around 11, and Optic end up closing it out. But it's little things like that that I think if Optic can just really focus on this little shit... Like, they would be way better. Like, they would just... I mean, on paper, you can't deny their talent. It just comes down to these little tiny things that I, whenever I'm watching, I'm like, oh, God, what are they doing? And then it always falls apart. Um, So if I could just see them working with each other a little bit more... Um, And granted, they know that. I feel like they know that. And they're they, they probably going back, and I'm sure they're happy about the win, but I'm just trying to help. I feel like with little things like that, if they can really perfect it and minimize a lot of these little tiny mistakes that they're making, they'd close out a lot more series. User was moved to your channel. What do you think, Ben? User yeah, I mean, I, 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 agree, I agree with you, uh, Tom, that I think... Uh, what the fuck was that? That was me. I, I was, Ian was poking me. I wasn't sure if you wanted to be in here or not. Oh. But to get, back to, to get back to your point, Tom, like, I agree. Uh, and Opix had a lot of, like, mixy round 11s. Uh, on this map they clutched up today uh but want to see them they've been good you know i want to give them some credit like they've been really good in snd for about 99 percent of the stage the only matchup it seemed like they had a little bit of difficulty snd was was phased but that's been a tough snd matchup for them uh in both series they played mm -hmm. um but ultimately, I agree. You know, I said ultimately again. It's okay. Uh, you I, can say the word. I, Just I fucking agree. roll with it at this point. We're gonna get. We're gonna get an emo I made. Agree that, I agree we might as well get a fucking emo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about this round 11, though, like, uh, end up just being a battle of the hard counters. I don't know if you want to talk this one through. Um, yeah, definitely a battle of the hard counters. I mean, Optic, again, they send Dashy over to that B-bomb site. They've been doing it all game long. They let him just go scout that B-bomb site, get some information. They'll obviously rotate back if they if they hear Dashy say anything. Um, but just good stacks coming out of the Optic guys, and it just comes down to their individual skill. I mean, right here, you see how tight Optic are playing? They're playing super tight. They have crossfires that can help each other. No matter User where moved to your no matter where LAG is coming from, they can always help each other, Ben. And that's why I like that setup. I like the crossfires. I yep. like the teamer. And that's what I want to see more out of Optic. Look how easy that was for them. LAG challenged them, and they fucking smoked them. Hasta la vista. Bada bang, bada boom. Have a good fucking day. They smoked them in 10 seconds because they had teamwork. They had crossfires, comms, a good setup. Like, shit like this. This should be a fucking well-oiled machine. They should be doing this every fucking round, Ben. Which is why yep. sometimes when I watch these rounds and I see them do dumb shit, I say something about it. Um, and, and listen, they might be watching the show and they might not like it. But at the end of the day, I think if they really hound themselves on this. And listen, they obviously won today 3-1. They get, they're they getting themselves out of a slump against an, a great LAG team. So by any means, they did not play bad today. They played great. I'm just saying it's the little things. When you're playing the best of the best, it's going to come down to who makes the less mistakes. That's what happens. When, you're, when you have amazing teams going head-to-head... -head, Whoever makes the less mistakes is going to win. That's all it comes down to. So really, really focus on the little things. And they show signs of greatness all the time. They show it. And they showed it right there in that round 11. Well, well uh, as uh, we go to that control and we have Enable from uh, LA Thieves. Big fan hey, of the world. Hey, what's show. going on, boys. Enable, a.k.a. Ian, a.k.a. Dick Compton? What's up? Wanted to chill. Wanted to chill with the boys. Ultimately, you got to think. <laughs> oh, dude, here we go, <laughs> Out of pocket as usual. <laughs> yeah. But I, I want to talk about this situation. I know Optic ended up winning this map, but a little bit of miscommunication here. They kind of all picked the same corner, and then they don't stack. Enable once goes ahead and pushes basketball. Uh, you said enable. You mean envoy? Envoy. Sorry, envoy. It's okay. envoy. I was gonna say Ian, you're, <laughs> you're fucking back. Ian, you're back. Ian's back on Optic, but uh, 
Yeah, um, I mean, I they, agree, they were actually absolutely frying LEG for like 40% of this round, and they set up that nice stack, and then a little bit of a miscom did not play that crossfire, you know, outside the uh, the wall to basketball kind of cost in this round. Mm -hmm. That being said, no harm, no foul. Did a really good job on their defenses and, and uh, um, you know, taking care of business here to uh, win the map. I mean, I definitely agree with you. I was actually doing a watch party during the series, um, and I know a lot of people might have been in here. Um, but I, I said that same exact thing this first round. I was like, I would have liked to see a stack right there. I mean, I know Envoy wants to push that basketball and maybe try and get a kill, maybe back up, try and finesse a little bit. Um, but with how close the point was to, to being capped, I mean, you saw Envoy was pushed out basketball. They had two people on the point, and they, they missed it by a little sliver, a little tiny sliver. If they get everybody on that point, it goes up in seconds. We've been saying it all year. So little, again, the little things. Listen, they won the map. But it's the little things that are that are gonna help this team, um, um, and ultimately we'll see how they do that. Okay. What do you mean, okay? No, but, just mocking me. but Ben, then we go into uh, you know, LAG. They come out, they win the first round. Uh, defense. We got Nameless in the chat. How you doing, Nameless? Let's get away as well. Yeah. What? What's up, Ben? You got yeah, something you want to say? To, I was about to say. So, so ultimate. Uh, I'm stop myself there again. Uh, <laughs> LG, Bro, Ian, I'm going to lose LG, fucking full today. I'm going to lose full. I'm Ben's trying to think about not doing it. It's all, it's all he's good. off the off fucking the pack. Cut. He's off the pack. He's, he's smoking on that hex pack right now. That's can what we, he's doing. Can we talk about uh, Scum might be the best art player in like raid. This guy is always getting two or three pieces in art every single time I see him here. And he's so good at like finessing in art. Mm -hmm. Like either going down and wrapping back through the garage or like going up and down the stairs and like going to the to the catwalk. This guy is super hard to kill in this spot. And whenever he's, I watch him play this map, all, they always get in a really good A setup because he can really do a good job of stacking with his team to get the initial kills and then holding the pinch and working inside the map. Mm -hmm. I mean, Envoy did it again right here. Look, they get the kills and he ends up pushing out basketball. But I see, I think right here, it's a good play for him to push out basketball. Yeah, I they, think because they don't have any takes, nobody's there to stack with them, right? It would only be two people on the point. So pushing up and trying to make a play, that's a good situation where you push out basketball and try and get some kills. But if you have your whole team around that point and you're getting kills, just stack it. Just throw everybody on it and hold some crossfires. Make them jump out the window. Make them flood through basketball. I mean, bro, if you're stacking the point, you eliminate the long route. Once they see that point going up at the speed of light, nobody's going to hit a long route. Nobody's going to hit water stairs. Nobody's going to pinch, but they don't have time. People are going to see that point moving up quick, so... I don't know. I would like to see uh, like to see them stack more in certain situations. But those, again, um, the, the little things. But but Ian, how you doing? And Abel, I, I want to get you in the conversation a little bit. Welcome to the flank. I'm doing good. You know what, Tom? I was going to stay quiet as people don't like my takes on Optic. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't like mine. Somebody just said, Zuma, like shut the fuck either. up. It's all good. Somebody just it, said in the chat, Zuma, it, shut the fuck up. Your, ana your analysis is flawed. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, I played professionally for eight years. I've won uh, championships in four different titles. I placed top three in every single title since going professional. I've beaten these players multiple <laughs> times. Every single buddy, every single player on this list, I've beaten them multiple times. Um, and I've watched the game of Call of Duty for years on years and years. Um, and, and and listen, I listen, uh, listen. A lot of these players, a lot of these players have beaten me multiple times as well. It goes back and forth. But Ultimately, I definitely, you've beaten I, these players a bunch you, of listen, times. Listen, I definitely know what I'm talking about. I definitely know what I'm <laughs> talking do. about. And, and, and listen, if, if people don't agree with my opinions, that's fine because that's what it is it's an opinion so if people don't agree with it then don't agree with it but um I, I i like to think i know what i'm talking about especially since i watch the game every fucking day um and i'm very hands-on people um, just don't like hearing facts they don't like hearing team. facts yeah, about yeah, their yeah, team and, yeah yeah they don't like and, and that's the problem right i i realized doing this show that like people are gonna get really annoyed about opinions but at the end of the day like i like everybody you know what i'm saying i have no bad blood with anybody it's it's a game like it's a fucking game and i'm gonna state my opinions based off what i'm seeing no matter if it's my friend or people that i played with or people that i, I have respect for everybody but at the end of the day like i'm just trying to help out and point out things that i think are flawed in people's game and gameplay so don't take anything i'm saying about the game personally guys because it's a game i'm not saying anything about anybody personally you know what i'm saying it's only my game why you have to be mad yeah yeah it's look, only look, game Tom, you I, since I love you, you want, I'll just give you like a, a general opinion on Optic. Not necessarily this this series, this map or anything, but uh, just because I was listening to you. And I think what you said earlier mm -hmm. is the the most important thing about their, their, just, their mental game, right? Uh-huh. They're a team that has all the talent in the world. Everyone knows this. But like you said, confidence and just your overall mindset is probably the most important factor when you're, when you're a professional, right? Because everyone's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah um everybody and, every and team I in said, the league 
I said something a couple days ago, you, you guys probably agree where it was like optics, not a slump. They're just not that great of a team right now. And I think you're a thousand percent correct with what you said. It's, it's like a confidence thing. It like, definitely is. You, you have to think, you know, we know for me and you actually know from personal experience. Yeah. Well, going into black ops three, people thought we were going to be the best team. We thought we were going to be the best team. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you, you start off and you're not doing so hot. Mm -hmm. You're not living up to expectations, right? People say you're in a slump. And then you realize, yo, we're just not really that good. You lose confidence in yourself you as a player. As a team. We lost confidence as ourselves. Hundred percent. I said know? that. I said that. I've had. We've had times in our careers, uh, like me specifically, where my confidence wasn't there, um, and it hinders your gameplay. It does. And and I think that's where optics at. I just think they're not as confident as they normally are in themselves as individuals and as a team. Exactly. Like, you you hit it on the nose. And it, that that eats you. That will eat you alive if you don't turn it around. And 100%. I think you know it's happened to plenty of teams in the past. I just think that's Optic's problem. They have no confidence in themselves, and I think it showed in their last what, like four or five series. Yep. They were they were on a pretty decent. I mean, look, they they played the two weakest teams in their group that first week, and they went two and L, and then they played New York Thieves and and uh, uh, who else uh, was in their group. I don't remember exactly. There's a, there's a, there's a fourth team but, I'm missing. But Ian, that's well, why I well, said. Go ahead. Uh, oh, go ahead. I just stopped Stay, you from sorry, saying. I was wrong about. Good, uh, good point. Uh, that's why I was gonna say, Ian. Like, I think this series against LAG was huge for them because it just kind of brought their confidence back, maybe a little bit. Like, I feel like they needed something like this. And as I said, just watching the series, they show signs of greatness. Like, they show what they're capable of. Like, their potential is there. Their ceiling is there. They just need to find it now. They need to find it mentally. They need to find it in their gameplay and just in. What I kept saying, I mean, I said it multiple times, but I'll say it again. The little things, just focus on the little things, because that's what's going to separate you from the from the bottom half of the list, right? When you're looking at 4th through 12th, they're all pretty close together. Um, that's one thing I really like about London right now, is when you watch them play, they're a fucking unit. It just feels like they play off each other really well. And you could tell, even in the listenings, that their small talk is on point, and they're just playing as a team. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the main thing. And I think the best thing for Optic was the comeback against LAG, they go down 0-1, they clutch up the S&D, which was huge, and win the next two maps is exactly what they needed to get their confidence back. And I hope, hopefully, as they as they go into their next match against Dallas, who's not going to be a walk in the park, and they're another team, Dallas, who hasn't been looking too good, um, hopefully Optic can keep their, this momentum going. And guys, listen, I say these opinions, and if people are watching, like some of these players are watching, I don't want them to think like, oh, like, Fucking, you sucked, this and that, you sucked, this and that. I'm not saying this saying it's super easy. It is very, very difficult to get your confidence back or to get your team on the same page Like if you guys aren't playing really well. I could say, I'm, I'm saying these opinions, but at the same time, it is very hard to, to execute. Um, and, and Enable knows that really well, for sure. Hey, hey, these motherfuckers don't realize I've won two championships on their optic banner, okay? <laughs> facts, I facts. The you green know, wall, they're looking at greatness. They're they're disrespecting me. I help them win chips, but no, I, I think I think what Ben <laughs> said too, um, the series versus Dallas is gonna be huge for them. They need to win it. I, I think if they win it, they have a possibility of getting back on track. Uh huh. Like no disrespect to LAG, because they do look like as a team they've been better on Optic, but LAG is a team that Optic can beat purely off talent. Not mm -hmm. saying that that's well, you know, they did that in this series, but they can. Yeah. Well, speaking um, speaking of that, I mean, we can talk about this map. Optic in the the situation that's kind of skipped through, they held P two from the front, which you rarely see. And then, you know, there are a couple other situations here where Optic takes advantage of the first three hills of the map to go ahead and build a good lead. It does get a little bit close at the end, and we'll kind of watch the situations. But I think ultimately, Optic's starting to kind of figure out hard point a little bit. Uh, where I think when I look at tomorrow, Ian, and I don't know if you kind of agree with me, um, I think that their uh, advantage over Dallas is in search right now. I think Dallas's S and D game, they still haven't found it. Dallas might have the edge a little bit in some of the respawns, but if it is a banger of a series that goes to Game Five, I'm feeling pretty good about Optics' chances in that last map. I agree. No, I, I mean you gotta you gotta think what S and D's their best mode right now. It's been their best mode. Great plays out of Scump right there, by the way, because yeah. he absolutely finessed. Scum was yeah, actually no, making. He played really well. He, he played Scum really well played too. really well. He played really well today. Um, he was making fucking plays. I mean, 
Guys, I'm going to be honest. If Optic would have lost that second map s and I could see this series going completely different, especially yeah. with a Red Hot LAG. And I think, a, been over. And I think a lot of hard. that that second map, a lot of it came to Envoy and Skump. I mean, those guys are making fucking plays, and they were working really well off each other, which is why I say if they can really just really focus on, on working off one another and working on that teamwork, they're going to be a top team. I mean, they, they are a top team now, but they haven't been executing the last few weeks, that's for sure, and nobody can deny that. So we'll see if they can keep the momentum moving forward. But closing in at the end of this map, Ben, was there anything that caught your eye? Anything that Optic did that uh, just like closed out this game or what? Uh, I'm going to kind of skip to the last P3 hill is sort of the, the difference. Optic does a good job um, uh, on the P2. And I want to just kind of watch you in here as Optic gets this, this break on LAG. And just point out, uh, Ian and Top, there's anything from here that you wanted to kind of discuss. <laughs> Mm -mm. I mean, uh, LAG. Bro, go ahead, Ian. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, Ben, the link that you linked me, I can't even open it. Can't, well, can't open it? Ah, uh, no, dude, enable it, always having PC no, issues. Uh, dude, don't even get me started. Always, bro. About always. Um, let me see. Oh, no, it doesn't even work, dude. I'm just watching off the stream, but. Okay. No, you're good. All right, I think keep going. Uh, one thing from my POV, watching that map back, and, and uh -huh. I'm going to kind of track it from from lag side of sort of getting this stage four i felt like they were really slow in moscow hardpoint mm -hmm. they were talking a lot about optic but i feel like to set up a lot of these breaks lag was very deliberate there wasn't a lot of speed great and if, word. You make, if you make those breaks and <laughs> great you're golden if you're failing then you've burned a lot of time to try and set up these elaborate pinches uh, or just like team pushes because you're waiting for people to run across the map so something to monitor as we have to move into a potential new meta coming up uh with some some uh stuff coming next week i'm curious to see uh, how they fare in the next stage yeah i see lag right the map is over they all got their hands on their heads but i think they should keep their heads held high man i think they came out and they've been improving and i think they look better um you know i'm, I'm really proud to see money chino chino get in there and just show what he can do um and the team just looks like they're moving more as a unit and that's always good to see and on the other side optic chicago they look great they came out they're still making little mistakes but at the same time um they came out and executed in one three to one they, cl they closed it out. They clutched up. They got some momentum. Maybe got a little bit of confidence back, and they go and play a, a, a Dallas Empire. Is it tomorrow they play Dallas? Yeah, we'll talk about it during the predictions. We'll, we'll, pro we'll talk about it during yeah. the predictions, but excited to watch that match for sure because I definitely think if Optic's on form, I, I think they're going to take down Dallas without a doubt. But we'll go on to our next series. We're kicking things off with Toronto Ultra versus Atlanta Phase. This, this was, was an a absolute banger. banger. This was a banger. Banger of a series. One of my favorite series of the day. Um, besides for the New well, York one, of the course, best series of the year so far. I great think. series. I mean, a lot of people yeah. would say these are like the top two teams right now. Um, I, I would throw New York maybe in that top two too. Listen, guys, I watch New York play. Yeah, New York, New York, Atlanta. Uh, uh, Toronto, they top three, yeah, they top three for me for yeah. sure, without a doubt. Um, and and this was just going really back and forth. They went up 2-0, and I'm gonna be honest. I thought when Faze was up 2-0, they were gonna put them away. I thought it was gonna be a 3-0. Um, and I was doing the watch party. My girlfriend came in the room. She said, nah, Toronto's reverse sweeping. And then they won the next couple maps, and I started losing four. Wait, I said, did Jesus. she really? She, she said that? She came in. She said, Toronto's reverse sweeping, and they won the next two maps. And I was like, holy shit. Michaela Queen might Mitch. be onto something. <laughs> Queen Midge. Um, but great series. We kicked things off, Ben, on Garrison Hardpoint. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the videos before we get into the first map. I saw a lot of bullshit on Twitter about this checkmate s and Here we go. When you play FaZe... You have to choose if you're going to play them on Moscow, which they don't lose, or Checkmate, which they don't lose. So mm -hmm. to pick your poison thing, <laughs> Toronto maybe saw something in FaZe's gameplay they wanted to exploit, uh, and they went with they went with the Moscow ban knowing that FaZe to pick Checkmate is what it is, guys. I don't think it was a bad ban out of Toronto. It's just, you know, you just got to deal with the situation at hand. Yep, for sure. But we kick things off, Ben. Start the map going. Get it going. We kick things off uh, with a listening from Toronto. Do you want to go on board and see how they yeah, sound? Uh, uh, Listen, I wanna, the I listening from, from the PTA. Yeah, yeah bit, Toronto ahead. has interesting listenings. To be fair, uh, when they went to listen today, I always critique their listenings, but they just—they're very calm. Yeah. Um, they're very quiet. They're very calm. It seems like uh, they're not too frantic, and uh, I kind of like it. Um, at first, I didn't really like it. Well. Let's be fair. The, the listenings we've heard from them be, prior, when they were shitting the sheets, it were absolutely terrible. Um, but now that they're that front, they're finding rhythm and finding their confidence. Uh, I don't mind the comms at all. Um, they just seem like they they know what they're doing and they're all on the same page. But Ben, I I know you want to point some things out, so I'll let you take the take the floor. Yeah, I mean, I I thought that Toronto did a really good job on the P threes. They out rotated Phase here and Phase. We talked about it in the last series that like you, Phase kind of rotated early this hill and then they just all died in rotation which can't mm -hmm. happen. Nope. So Toronto built a little bit of a lead. Uh, it did get a little bit closer 
uh, actually, uh, ish by the, f the fifth hill. So in this first rotation, then Fates kind of took the lead at some point towards the tail end of the second rotation and didn't look back. Uh, I think that Toronto listen starts here in a little bit of a second time. I mm -hmm. know that you wanted to, uh, take a look at it. So yep. let me get to that point. There it yeah, is. Take it from here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go on board with, uh, the listening from Toronto ultra. One thing I will say about phase is I like the way that they stay disciplined, even when things aren't going their way. Um, and that's ultimately why they won the map then. But let's go into an Astro game. Listen in with Toronto Ultra. Oh, I choked it, Ben. I choked <laughs> you it. You skipped ahead? No way, yeah, bro. Let's calm, just buddy. calm like we're them. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a Luma, bro. That's a Luma. I misclicked, bro. I misclicked. But um, yeah, let's go into a listen in. Yep, got it. Right after that trade. Ultra in control as of now on this map one, looking to do what they did at the last time. Right, I'm in time. time. Mid tank somewhere. Mid tank's laying down. Underground, 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 underground. Nice, nice, nice. I was gonna be top Yeah, he's beach on time, Cam. Just kill Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kill Hawk. Free, free. Yeah, I was gonna be top green. Okay, let's go. He's cross gold, me cross gold. So they got a trophy top green, they got a trophy top green. 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 They so I'll maybe just slid mid. I can't. I Sometimes can't same supreme in top cap. Yeah, it's same, same, same. Head time. Top green, top green, top green. Top green. Top green. Hey, top cap, top cap, now Kim. Yeah, two, two. Right, top green and uh, a BC top cap. Ten seconds. Yeah, sell an old. Don't seem top you green. You die, hold your kill. Yep. Yeah, don't seem top green. Cat says, cat says, jump dead grey box, grey box, sell. I use top floor. Sell. One's a new, one's a new. Nice, good job. One behind a P5 box. Some might hold green. I'll play square. I'll hold green, I'll hold green. I'm trying to get square. Could be gold then. Green bricks. I'm talking green now, a BC, weak. Very calm. It's yeah. I like it. I like it. I can that one more. Nice. What's green? Uh, Easy, next I'll lower it now. You, I could lower it. We're good. I want to skip a little bit ahead because I know when that's the time. I want to talk to the moment in this map that I thought was sort of the big talking point. So at one point, uh, you'll see here that the cleanse is going to get streaks. I don't think it's at this point. I think it's more towards the tail end of this rotation. Uh, and he ends up using them at the end of the game and kind of burgers in a situation where I think he streaks himself, right? If I he streaks correctly. himself at the end of the game. Um, yeah. the, the end of the game, they had a chance to get in and uh, use those streaks. But for some reason, he he dropped the streak on the point and decided to run into the point as his streak <laughs> was going twisted. down. Was twisted. So I don't know what's going on here, Enable, but um, he might have been a little twisted. Maybe he thought that the, tr that the streak already hit the floor or he just, like, mistimed it. I'm not really sure what he was thinking. Um, but the Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Oh, no, no. Sorry. I just wanted to touch on because i might be in the minority i know how you are uh -huh. i thought i love toronto's communication no i, I, I do it, now i do now i mean at first when i listened to it, it was way worse way worse um they they're definitely more on the calmer side um and it's and it's very calm and composed and i could see why they're very relaxed in game but they're in the beginning when things weren't going their way they weren't even talking at all like there was yeah, just times where like it's just there quiet there was that one listen that was pretty bad i i just like how they never get too high never get too low yeah you know like i I mean, I, I've been on teams that were successful in the past, and there's both sides of it, right? Like when we team with Clay, pure mm -hmm. energy, and then uh, my 100T team was was kind of like Toronto, yeah, where it's just literally clear comps. You're kind of you're like cold blooded, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're just locked in, just doing what you're saying, what you gotta say, and that's it. Yeah, and, and I think that honestly is one of the biggest reasons why Toronto's so good right now and why their team works so good. Yep, I agree. They're very composed, um, and it, that's probably why they're not making so many mistakes because they're super relaxed and they're really focused on about what they have to do. And you know, they practice every single day, so they have a goal in mind and they're they're just doing a really good job executing. Um, but Phase they end up clutching up the first map, and I, I think the main problem was Kleenex at the end just kind of bombing himself by accident um but to be fair he was playing insane and kleenex is an absolute beast he was going off he was i think he just misread the play a little bit and um it ended up costing him because i do think they could have gone in on that point and maybe tried to make a play um but just a great map between these two teams to kick things off but phase comes out on top and we move into a checkmate snd ben yeah this is also an interesting checkmate for about 50 percent of the time and then and then phase kind of rambled away with it at the end with a little bit of an adjustment um, was a really interesting tactical battle. I really liked what Toronto was doing, especially on defense, uh, by having Bantz work bottom plane and making picks. Um, this was an interesting round. It ended up going to a 1v1. I think FaZe probably would play this round a little bit differently. I mean, a BZ uh, went rogue as fuck. Well, let's so, be honest. This guy yeah, just, he, he just, he just slide canceled out of yeah. the fucking exit door on plane. And they were just like, got a free kill. He's he got to be the hardest kill in playing. 100%. In, in a game. He 100%. He's probably I mean, annoying as fuck. We talked about this so much. Like, I, I am surprised they didn't play this map for a majority of this year, but they're undefeated on it again. 
Uh, they're just so hard to beat this team and playing. This is actually Alex in the chat. Alex, yeah, we're going to a nice cities. tip in this round. Uh, he ends up winning a nice 1v1 versus Insight here. We'll let it play out if you want to I mean, can we, time. while Arceus is in the chat, can we just give this guy some gas real quick? This guy's been on another been level. Frying, he's been absolutely yeah, frying. Frying. Not just On top of that, he's been helping these guys get together, keeping these guys in check. Oh, he's on the shots. back line wa wa watching over all these guys doing what they do. So trying to keep the team organized on top of frying and, and doing what he does. I mean... Bringing RCDs onto this team was one of the best decisions they've ever done, in my opinion. I think it's just a great all-around team, and I think they work really well off each other. And I know a lot of people were giving RCDs flack maybe a few weeks ago, maybe with some of his performances, maybe even with himself. I know he's very hard on, him, on himself, um, but uh, he, he's been playing absolutely amazing. So I just want to give a, a huge shout-out to RCDs because he's been doing his fucking thing. So let's drop a war RCDs in the chat. So let's let's talk about this round. So this yep. ends up being a one v two ace for a BZ. He gets those first two kills. Um, the uh, the phase guys do a good job of getting this uh, backing up, kind of playing around the bomb. Now this situation kind of plays weird than two v two. I think Simp did Simp get wall banged in this situation, or did he get shot by inside? It was hard to tell because you really weren't like watching him from his POV. Mm -hmm. And Cleans was able to suss out Simp's spot, and then BZ does a really good job in the one v two, just taking the two solo challenges that he has and winning them. Yeah, it was a good play by Kleenex to go all the way around, take a little bit of a long route. Yeah. Um, you see him crouch walking around the map because he doesn't want to be heard. We know that a lot of these pro players, they're kicking their headsets up. But Kleenex, he's able to take down one in a BZ. He does what he has, what he does best. He he's in these mixy situations. He he singles out Kleenex. He takes him down, makes it a one v one situation with twelve seconds on the clock. Um, and he has to get the bomb down. I'm not really sure what no, he, Insight's plan was to yeah. be honest. Um, I, no, I would, he, they're on defense. I, I mean, uh, Insight yeah. has to get the bomb down. I'm really yeah. not sure what Insight's plan was. I would like to see him get that bomb and maybe try and make a play. Um, but he just kind of sat there and he didn't really do much. So BZ, he was able to win the two one on ones and, and just clutch up. And then I think after this round is when Phase started taking it away, Ben. If I remember yeah, correctly, Phase one two offenses end up being the difference here. Nice little. Uh, a little sneak plant from Alec here. Um, his teammate shoulder to help him get back. And then phases play this rip 4v4 very well. They back up. They have all the angles. And they go ahead and they grab an offensive win. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. Uh, Enable, anything that caught your eye in this map other than the tiny terrors in plane just being annoying as fuck? Because we uh -huh. talked about this map. Ben and I talked about this map. And FaZe didn't play Checkmate SD um, a lot in the beginning of the year. And we were always saying, like, why not, right? Because they just have these players that could just go rogue. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, their their S and D in general has been amazing lately with Tupac. Mm -hmm. But like Ben said, it's a lose lose depending on what map you want to play. I just, if I was a player where you know on checkmate you get into a lot of close range engagements, I, I wouldn't want to go up against a BZ Sip. They're two of the best players when when it comes to that. So I just nothing crazy. Like I predicted, I thought Phase would win this map, um, especially with how they mm -hmm. looked in S and D. I think it was just the normal. Yeah, like a, a BZ and Sim were just doing their thing, and then when they're on, especially in the play, it's it's hard to beat them. I agree. I mean, you made a good point with the Tupac pickup. Um, you know, a lot of people could say whatever they want. Uh, we were talking about it a little bit in my watch party today, but some people are saying he doesn't do anything. Like they feel like he he doesn't really? help the team. I don't think he does anything. I mean, it was half and half. Like most of my chat said, you know, like Tupac was a good pickup. Um, I had asked him personally. I think he's a great pickup. I mean, Phase's S and D has looked really shaky, and if you bring in somebody like Tupac who really knows the, the in and outs of this game mode, that can just kind of tell them every little thing about what's wrong with their with their gameplay in this game mode, and it, it's clearly helped. I mean, Phase, what, what's their record Ooh. in S and D last couple of weeks? Because yeah, I, I feel like I think they only lost one with Tupac, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and it was yeah, right yeah. off the right off the rip. It was right yeah. off the rip when they had just picked him up. It was so that, it was that raid against uh, uh, New York, but I think. Uh, didn't um, Chris, uh, a.k.a. Crowder, come on the show and basically say that Tupac runs their S&D practice and then, you know, basically runs their S&D game and matches in terms of preparing the team? Like, we know what this guy brings. He brings game plans. He brings set plays. You pair that with some really good instinctual search and destroy players. It's mm -hmm. a great recipe for just absolutely dominating the league. Yep, there's a lot of people mode. in the chat just asking who he is exactly. Tupac is just an S&D star. He's been playing S&D for, for a really long time, multiple years. Um, not just any S and D. I mean, he's a very good S and D star. He one he wins best, right? one of the best. Wins a lot of tournaments. He's known for just being really smart. Uh, he's got good gunny. 
Um, he's handsome. This guy does it all, guys. He does it all. Um, and it was a good pickup for FaZe. And I love that FaZe is making moves to try and uh, pick up some more people to try and help with the team. It just shows that they really want to win and that they really care about their team. So um, just a good pickup out of them. And uh, their, their S&D has definitely looked a lot better, for sure. At least in my eyes. They just seem, to, they just seem a little bit more comfortable. Um, you know what it is, Tom? Yeah. I think he just makes their S&D a lot more structured. Yeah. Like, FaZe has unbelievable S&D players, obviously. But I think in the pro scene, what makes a really good S and D player, and uh, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong because mm -hmm. you were obviously one of them, is like it's your heat of the moment, mid map adjustments, yep. like situational awareness, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're amazing at. But sometimes, you know, maybe their post plan setups or uh, their retakes, like the general strategy, yeah, it can be a little off, and not only for them, just. And then any team in general, I think Tupac, that's probably what he's helped the most, right? Mm -hmm. Where like they have a, a handful of A, a plants, how yep. they want to set up. And then when phases in the situation, they're going to be great because of their situational awareness when it comes to S and D. Yep. But the fact that going into the round, they have a game plan. It just makes Helps. everything flow easier. Yeah. And I, I, th I think that showed in this stage with their S and D. No, 100 i definitely agree with you the situational play the mid-round adjustments that's that's what makes a, a good snd player a good snd player um and then i think all these guys on phase have the instinct to make plays whenever they want to make plays but i agree with you just the structure that tupac can bring to these guys maybe give them like a little bit of you know some goals maybe to, some things to focus on when you're when you're approaching different maps um listen just having another eye another eye right another set of eyes mm -hmm. just to be looking over everything um and just pointing out every little tiny thing and uh, just helping these guys execute. And that's exactly what he's been doing. And they win the s &D. They end up going up 2-0 here. But then we go into the garrison control. And Toronto, they come out hopping. Yeah, I think the story of the game here for FaZe was at the end with their eight. They didn't do a good job of putting a lot of beat pressure on these offenses, except for or defense, sorry, except for one. And then in both the second round and the fifth round, they just got their A setup broken pretty late in the round. And watching in the fifth round, FaZe ended up having like a shitload of streaks that they burned, um, but they weren't able to really capitalize and, and normalize and ultimately Toronto able to break through mm -hmm. and win this map. Yep, somebody in the chat said, and then you have people like Optic who don't want any analyst or any co any more coaches or anything like that. I mean, whatever floats their boat, man. I mean, every team is different. I personally think another set of eyes. Listen, you have to pick up the right people, man, because pro players, you need to pick up people that are respected. Um, you can't just pick up anyone because if they're not respected and, and people don't appreciate their opinions or whatever, then it's never going to work. It's just going to be a waste of time. So I agree with Optic in, in a certain sense, but at the same time, if there was somebody out there like Tupac, for instance, who's on the table to help make their S&D better, I mean, I think Tupac is a great, great uh well, they, they had they had Tupac last year and they didn't bring him on again. Yeah, they so didn't bring him on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What, whatever they they think is going to help them in their camp, they can do what they do. Um, they ended well, up dropping them. Were they like them, a but... top three S and D team too last year, or they were like really good? They, they were on a really good run when they got rolling with Tupac. Yeah. Mm -mm. So I don't know. I don't really know why they got rid of them, but at the end of the day, Phase they scooped them up. And their S&D has looked a lot better. I mean, we'll just say how it is. And let's just be honest. If they're picking up somebody like Tupac, it clearly shows that they're really uh, interested in getting that game mode, or getting better in that game mode. Um, they're not looking to just be shit or mediocre at it. They really want to improve that game mode. And they know that if they can get their S&D top notch, that they're going to be a tough team to beat. Um, and that's exactly why they came out and beat Toronto today. Their S&D. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, ben? yeah they look good yeah, in both yeah. of them. So, so I, I skipped ahead. I want to skip ahead and talk about this, this map a little bit. Mm -hmm. Round five in the control, kind of really back and forth. Both teams went in offense. FaZe actually got a lot of streaks. You didn't watch round four, but FaZe gets like five streaks, I think, or three streaks. Um, they once again get this round down pretty close, uh, but their B setup gets burned. Um, well, we'll kind of skip ahead here a little bit because I, I don't want to skip, you know, kind of waste time. But ultimately, like, they get four dead here and then they all go down again, uh, which is really tough from FaZe. They were in a good position to get a spawn kill here. It just didn't capitalize. And I really like the work from Toronto on how they set up a lot of these breaks, especially their A hits. They're, they can go fast and get four dead and hit green and stack the point when they need to. Mm -hmm. Or when they run against opposition, they do a good job of sussing whatever that setup is and working a break with their teamwork, getting the trades in their favor, then collapsing on bricks and stacking the A point. Yep, no, they're very organized. Toronto definitely knows what they're doing. Um, you could tell that in practice. They're really focusing on just 
being a good team and just making sure that they have their fundamentals on point. Um, and it's just the main thing. It's what separates the, the teams at the top from the teams at the bottom. When you're looking at the minimap and you see the way the teams move around and how they work off one another, um, it's just clear as day watching these Toronto guys play. It's just why they're just, uh, you know, a tier above the rest. Um, and they're up there with New York and FaZe and some other teams. But um, they end up closing out this control, Ben. Simp had a few streaks to work with. I know FaZe... Um, they, they were frying on all cylinders. I thought they were going to close it out here, but Toronto do a good job just getting the kills and getting on this A point and uh, doing what they do best and closing out the game. Yeah, we'll watch it out uh, as, as Faith's kind of burn all these streaks. You know, they never get in a position where they kill all four guys. At one point, they'll call in streaks here, and one of the Toronto players kind of finesses in bricks, and they're unable to really Bence. find him in this situation. Great they play by Ben. A couple of different plays. At the beginning of this whole sequence, staying alive on the hill. And waiting for his teammates to flood out green. And in this situation, where he shoots our season uh, and and buys enough time for his teammates to then stack the point again, phase burn another streak. Mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately, you know, Toronto, as we'll watch, uh, are going to be able to kind of set up a break here after phase burn all their streaks and work the kills, collapse, and go ahead and grab some momentum. At this point, I don't know what you were thinking. Once toronto won this map i felt like this was going to go to a game five yeah no i agree I don't, know, I don't know if you had the same kind of feeling from no your i did just because again the momentum switch um but i like the way toronto plays the end of this game they have 40 seconds to work with but they're staying patient and relaxed they're going around they're they're checking all the corners they're they're waiting for one another nobody's trying to make any solo plays they end up working through breaks they pick up a couple kills they collapse on the point and they cap it they stack it and they cap it just a good play it's a good play out of the whole squad. Stack it and cap it. I like that. Yep, stack it and cap it, baby. Um, and it, it was just a good play out of Toronto. I, I like the way they, they organized that, and I like the way they executed it. And again, that's the difference. That's the difference right there, and it's clear as day. But then we go into another hard point. We're going into a fourth map, and it's raid hard point here, Ben. Yeah, and I think the story of this map was absolute and insane performance from Cammy. He was getting two and three pieces left and right. They got some of them inside at the end. And, and for FaZe, I think... They were in a decent position to make this game close, but Toronto made some really good plays in the P3 and just sort of never looked back from there. A really dominant performance by the Toronto Ultra team on this map. Mm -hmm. Dominant performance. Uh, Ian, I don't know if you watched uh, a lot of this map or a lot of this match, but what were your thoughts watching this back? Um, I, I did watch majority of it. it. For me, I feel like Toronto, this map, you really just saw how good their teamwork is. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yep. Obviously, Cami had some big plays um, down the stretch, but like Raid is a map that they excel at because I feel like when it comes to breaking hills, it, it's one of the hardest, uh -huh. uh, in my opinion. I agree. And, and they just have really good... Uh, and they have a really good overall understanding and, and teamwork when, when it comes to breaking it and holding those hills. It's not like FaZe doesn't. Uh, the, you know, it was a very close map, in my opinion. And it could have went either way, depending on, you know, some situational gunfights and whatnot. But yep. I think it was just, it was more of momentum on Toronto's side when, when these two teams stack up, getting that control, and then going into this. I, I thought it was going to game five as well. Yeah. I mean, when you have two teams that are just as talented and, and just are really good um, as a team, right? They're just going head to head. It's going to come down to those individual gunfights or who makes the less mistakes and, and stuff like that. So this was an absolute battle. It was very back and forth. I think the main thing is that both teams just stay very disciplined. Like when things don't go their way or breaks don't go their way, they focus on their rotations, they focus on their setups, focus on their teamwork. And mm -hmm. Toronto, they're able to pull away with this one a little bit. Going into this next rotation of Hills, as they get into this P2, they have a good hold. Um, at phase, they're, they're forced to flood through the front. You see them all flooding through the front. And again, this this map could have got really out of control. Um, FaZe, because of the talent that they have, they're able to do stuff like that. But Toronto, they hold off. They get themselves a 100-point lead. And going into this garage hill, Toronto, they don't get much time. FaZe ends up closing it out. But they stay disciplined. They rotate over to basketball. And we know how hard it is to break basketball and, hill. And let's talk about this situation. Can so, we talk about this spawn? Yeah. Because so oh, this, this spawn was Fugues. I don't, I don't remember what series we saw uh, that there was, like, 
a weird situation where a team, a te like someone from one of the other team was in the back on this planner and then someone spawned jungle behind them and they were like WTF. It seems like the spawn is very skippy, very sticky. And I know people are complaining to us for stop skipping. Listen, guys, guys we don't want the show to be fucking five hours we're long. Trying, we're trying to push through these <laughs> Listen, we, we can, we yeah. can, I see Jake Cap complaining about it in the chat. Listen, we, do, we don't want these shows to be like four to five hours long, man. We we go on for a really long time and uh, there's we don't need to talk about every little tiny thing. Um, if, the, if you guys want to watch the whole map, Go back and watch it. The, 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 whole, the whole thing is on uh, on YouTube. We want to talk about the key points and, and talk about some other things and make sure we get through these series as quick as possible. Get into our predictions and get into some questions at the end and close out the show. So, Ben, continue. Yeah, and this is just a weird one. I, I, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on this one. I just feel like in this situation, like, I don't know why the Toronto players are spawning out in this situation. It's very weird. Um, yeah, I don't know why they're spawning out, and be, I guess because all the spawns are blocked now, you have Cammy looking at back laundry, you have two guys spawning out bedroom, I guess that's why FaZe ended up getting this spawn. It was just so weird to see it all unfold, like Cammy gets There's all the like kills, eight, the whole, he like, turns nothing. around, FaZe team is spawns, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. whole Fucking team Avengers. is just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> dead ass, they all <laughs> popped up out of nowhere. Um, but they do a good job handling it. Um, they, they yeah, do they a good get, job. They get they, all the kills. And they, yeah. They, hold this they get all the kills. They close it out. And it's just a good play by Toronto. And again, it's, it's a discipline just to not just keep pushing. Insight finds a big three piece at the end and, and they close it out. And then we go into a game number five, Ben. And this one, uh, again, I didn't know who the fuck was going to win this one. Um, cause phase, they come out strong. They go up 2-0. Toronto makes a comeback. They have all the momentum in the world. I'm thinking Toronto's hitting the reverse sweep here, but phase, they do a good job. Hold it on, Ben. Yeah, I think the story of this um, S and D, and we're gonna skip to about round five, and so kind of want to watch it from there, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, was the the great retakes from Atlanta Face? Uh, mm -hmm. I think part of this is a big shout out to the players, a big shout out to Tupac. Um, this is an area where they have struggled in at times on this map, um, retaking B, retaking A, uh, and I really liked how they played some of these situations. Where we know that Toronto is really strong in this map. They're B set up with a takeover laundry and just hold and have really good teamwork. This post plan setup, a lot of teams have struggled to beat this. And FaZe did a really good job hey, of pinching from up. all sides and making it difficult for Toronto, getting the trades and pushing through. Mm -mm. I actually just received that ASIM is no longer allowed on the show. The team has cut him off from going on the flank until no after the major. No way. Oh, this guy's been coming on the flank for forever. Every is it like after, a good luck charm? Yeah, it's like a win? good luck charm after every W. What the fuck is this bullshit? He comes on for 10 minutes. What the hell is he doing? What the hell is Asa doing not, right we'll, now? That's we'll, so important. We'll He's probably we'll on GTA. On Let's <laughs> okay, sorry. I got a little carried away. But it was good luck. It was good. That was the whole point. So, oh, fuck. That's a fucking L, bro. That's an L, man. What the fuck, bro? But, yeah, I agree with you, Ben. The, re the retakes were impressive, especially at the end of this map. The way that they were able to retake uh, the, the last round when Toronto got the bomb down. They pushed out that laundry side. It was just a good play by FaZe. They just seem well organized. I'm always worried when I see Sally in top bedroom because it's just so easy to fucking wall bang people this guy out of there. Always, this guy always gets peace from top bedroom, bro. Come on, MC. I mean, it's just it's just easy to get peaced up there. I mean, everybody's I looking at it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the fucking best of worst This spot. guy's always getting blood up there. I will say, though, Simp had an unbelievable map. This clutch here at the end. Uh, when his teammate got gunned to go ahead and slide out here and, and make sure he doesn't miss his shots on a weak uh, mm -hmm. Kleenex. I think Simp ended up finishing this map 12 and 4. Uh, and he made a lot of really good plays, uh, including, and we'll get to it, uh, uh, round 8, where he makes a pretty like unorthodox flank. And mm -hmm. in this round, when he pitches um, into window to go ahead and cause pressure here, I just, he's an MVP superstar player, and this is the round, this is a series. Uh, and this is a match where you need that player to make those type of plays. No, 100%. I mean, FaZe, they go down again, like I said, with Toronto, with the momentum coming into this game five. I thought it was going to be chalked. They go up three to one, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, here we go. FaZe is about to get reverse swept on. Then they bring it back. They stay composed. They focus on what they practiced, and they bring it back three to three. Um, this round, Toronto, they're on the offensive side. This is the seventh round for those of you listening on Spotify or Apple or whatever. Um, RC, he's able to come through pillars, try and make a play. Inside, so they're finessing. Oh it God. looked like he was about to get stuck, but he he had just moved out the way, just dodged it. But I noticed Toronto does this a lot. They try and get that laundry control. They try and get the bomb down for laundry and try and push out the spawn. But again, phase. They do a great job just pushing together, make make sure they're working off one another, make sure they get, they're pushing stuff out together. And, and just like that, they use their numbers to push out the rest of these Toronto guys. And with a few seconds left to spare, they hop on this bomb and, and they get it done. Yeah, this is the round where I, I really like the play that sent me in this round. So... Uh, Toronto put a lot of mid pressure. Excuse me. 
And watch number seven on the map. For those at home, FaZe is planning on the A bomb site on raid, which is the pool side of the map. And Sip decides to make a play where he uh, pinches all the way back through the driveway and goes through circle. I thought that Bant also then made kind of a crazy play on this. He was lying down. There was a chance that uh, he might have gotten some good timing there. Uh, but ultimately, there's enough of a distraction where BZ gets a really good kill on Tiki. And then FaZe is kind of play the numbers from here with their two bedroom to go ahead and win this round. Hey, wake yeah, up. Yeah, good plays. Guys, enough with the fucking NYSL slender. First of all, it wasn't management. The team just doesn't want anybody doing any content or getting on the show because they're in the middle of a tournament, which is completely fine. I was completely just trolling. Let's all fucking relax. They they want to make sure that they're focused on the tournament. They're not uh they're not doing anything stupid. I was just fucking around. But I will say Asim coming on the show was a good luck charm. That's the only thing I was saying. Uh <laughs> so that's the only reason why I was fucking trolling. But phase they go up five to three, and if you put phase in a situation where they're up five three, um you, you gotta thank Ben. They're gonna close this out. Um yeah, so they so do a good job. So let's talk next steps for both these teams. Uh, FaZe is going to go ahead and, and sit around all day as well as New York, and they're going to face off in winner's finals. And for Toronto, I don't think this is the last we've seen of this matchup, potentially, in this major. Mm -hmm. I think Toronto is by far the strongest team in losers bracket right now. For uh, sure. And they're, they're going to make yeah. a run through a lot of these teams. It's going to be a grind, but they did it in the last major to go ahead and win. I have full faith that we are likely going to see them uh, definitely 100% see them in losers finals, and I feel pretty confident that this might be the matchup in uh, grand finals again. Yep, and again, phase with the retakes, right? Toronto gets that B bomb site down. They hit from every single lane, and none of them even die. They all just work with each other, get all the kills, defuse the bomb, call it a fucking day. Series is done. Bada bing, bada boom. Have a good day. Then we go Have into the day. next one. We go into the fucking next one, Ben. New York subliners going up against the Florida Mutineers, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. The fast one. I don't know what to talk about. This series is over in 25 minutes. This was an absolute grind of a series. No, I'm kidding. I agree with you. You could have, you could have walked away, uh, done a lot of things, come back, and the series is over in like 20 minutes, and you're like, what the hell did I just miss? Vito seemed pretty straightforward. I was a little surprised that New York... Actually, well, the Vito's weren't straightforward. I was a little surprised that New York been checkmate in that series. That was an interesting strategy out of them. Mm -hmm. They're working out. They looked really good on both garrisons. And Express has indeed been a great map for New York. Uh, I don't know where you want to start with this series. I mean, it was I basically mean, just one listen, traffic. I, I thought the New York... I thought we were getting the squad on. I thought Asim was coming on. Asim had poked me before. I was just going to talk to Asim about the squad. So now I'm a little lost. I don't know what to do here. He left me in the dark. He just poked me in the middle of the show. So it looks like kick come on um i blame clayster i see clayster in the chat but he just dropped the five so now i can't blame him now we gotta give him a fucking will in the chat a bit of and jim fraud you just talk about the he, clay takeover he said, he said it's not an nysl show i agree clay it's not an nysl show i agree and you guys don't have to come on i just thought i thought asim was gonna come on it's a good luck charm it's a good luck charm uh, uh clay for asim to come on it's always been good luck. at least let asim come in here clay and just say hey what's going on like at least let him say something clay let him say, come on, Clay, come on. Can we get a Wait, Willa in the chat? Okay, he can do that. This, can okay, hold on. this play that uh, Neptune makes in this situation? So he hops out of the map. I don't know if you see where number eight is. He's in a weird spot, and they lose track of him, and he ends up making kind of like a cool-ass play in this situation. Wait, can we talk about how Clayster's 55 years old, and he's playing like he's fucking 16? This guy's on the form of his life. Uh, he's Daniela De Rossi. This guy's on a form. He's Daniela playing some of the Rossi. best cut I've ever I mean, seen him true. play. He's literally like Andre Pirlo, Dan Daniela De Rossi. Pick your pick your favorite Italian soccer player, man. Bro, this guy is fucking gross. And and not, and not just that, he brings. There's so many like things that he brings to this team. Not just the talent, but just him as a person and the energy that he brings and the leadership that he brings. I mean, dude, Clay's just like, bro. Clay's my fucking goat. I'm gonna be the one to say it. Clay's my goat, bro. He's you, the fuck. A, you run quite a few chips. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he, no, no, he's my go to AR. He's my go to AR, bro. Clay's just fucking, he's just raw. Like, he's just fucking raw. He's always been raw. Um, So I'm just a big fan. Big fan. And listen, I know I'm on New York, so people are going to fucking, you know, say whatever they want. But I don't you know, know, bro. You know Clay's in here in the chat. And he's doing the, his no, IPAs, Clay's the go to AR. Back. Listen, he's bro, the drink go your IPAs and just, just take my guy. Listen, you, as you <laughs> can tell, I'm trying to give my teammates delusional confidence right now. Um, And, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down the list. Then you got Hydra. The French phenom. There's nothing to say about this series, guys. They fucking mopped them in 20 minutes. Uh, I was watching it just the whole time. We're just saying shit on, gun, have a good day. Fuck you. I was watching it back there. It wasn't even close. Um, then you got Hydra, the French phenom. His comms sound great. Um, we actually have an actual game listening with the subliners, and let's see how they sound. Hopefully, I don't choke it this time. I got it. Oh, no one in the green No one in the green spot. I'm playing P1. What's my green? That's just one green. That's just one green. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's, there's still two I'm kills. Flat. The two gens, sorry. I'm, I'm gonna go gen, green. probably, dude. Top green! Top 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 one gen weak, one gen weak. 
Oh, you don't mean that. One more time, one more time, one more time. 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 Okay, one more time. One more time, 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 one more Nothing else, top green. Back out, one's back out, one's back out. This one guy back out. One more brick, one more brick. Oh, I'm getting shot. Arch, 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 arch. Cole Havoc is arch. And and awakening. Yeah, awakening one plus, one plus. Awakening one plus. Nipsey plus. Nipsey plus. One more Cole Havoc and Brick. Yeah, yeah. We're looking for Cole. Big up and you and one plus. You must push out green. Cole's in green. Cole's in green. One shot. We got hills, guys. One top green. Emma, 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 Emma. I'm green, dead. I ram, I ram, I push. I'm down on back alley. I'm down on back alley. Big kills here. One casters, one casters. Elves cross is open. Can you go? Elves cross. I'll look at. I'll I'll green, guys. I'll I'm flashed. If you need help, green, let me know. Yeah, okay, one green, one green. Hey, green. wake up. That's that. Two ammo. Arc. One's one shot, one's one shot ammo. There's two. I got no, one. one. Really good uh, comms at Hydra. Great comms. Oh, the whole squad. Dark. No, no, dark. I got three. Nice. Uh, I'm still blind. Yeah, Clay needs to take some notes. Less talking, like Hydra. Right to the point. No, I, I, I think, I'll lower I think here. This, uh, what we talked about, Tom, is like yeah. NYSL. A little bit more energy than a team like Toronto, you know, but that's that's what you're gonna get when you have a player like Clay, who's yeah. just gonna consistently hype up his teammates. And it's you know, if it works for your team, it works for your team. A hundred percent, hundred percent. But it sounded good. Yeah, no, it sounded great. I mean, I like the the spawn calls, right? Clayster's in the chat saying talk about the spawns and and stuff like that. They're definitely calming. Um, they're they're from, small from talking. Here, this this P two P three is where they really pull away. Yeah, the they, they start. Close. Yeah, they start to pull away here. But I, I like yeah. the spawn knowledge coming out of the squad. Um, you know, based off the spawns that they're getting, they're they're small talking with each other and just letting each other know where where they're coming from and when splits are coming in. Um, they're playing off one each other, one another. They have a lot of energy. Um, they're very positive. Like the comms are just very positive. So. Um, just I just really enjoyed that listening for sure. I see a poll in the chat. What 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 French player suits Hydra? Mbappe, Pogba, Conte, or Benzema? Mbappe. Mbappe. It's not even a question. It's Mbappe. It's not even close. Conte. It's a, Mbappe. Wait, first of all, <laughs> like, wait, hold on. Like Conte's, Conte's nasty. nasty. Wait, He's Conte's nasty, disgusting. But but but, 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 Conte, but, but yeah, but Paco doesn't fit Conte. He doesn't. Um, if, any, if anything, Lloris is clay. Let's well, like based on this list. Pogba. <laughs> Pogba is. Uh, I don't know about I guess that. Ace him. Look, look, even Hydra's in the chat. He said Mbappe. Look, he said fucking Mbappe. Definitely Mbappe, bro. For for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, New York, they they came out and they, they did their thing. And uh, I'm just really excited to watch them play moving forward. I mean, we can go through the rest of this series, Ben, if you I mean, want. I think we should skip the rest of this map because it's, um, it's Yeah, yeah, it's a I, I, we, 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 should, we, we could definitely just blow series by this series. Ass, um also with uh with New York, uh, yeah, yeah, we bad. also we don't want to listen. I don't want to give away any strats. Clay doesn't want to give away anything. He doesn't. He said he said that Asim could come in and, and say hello, but but Asim's not joining. I'm gonna poke him right now. I'm gonna say he's fake. I just poked him. I said he's fake. That's a good, that's um, a good poke out of you. Yeah, I poked him. All he needs to do is come in and say hello, you know, and just bring his vibes and, and bring his energy. But let's get an L in the chat because it's just absolutely pathetic at this point. And, and this was one of the fastest S and Ds I think I've ever watched. This was a ho and that, hottest of hot yeah, success. So then we're doing the watch party and somebody in my chat soak i don't know if you're still in here he's like i'll give 10 if, if new york sub one or 6-0 right now and boy did they 6 0 him <laughs> these rounds went by so 10? fast yeah he gifted 10 he oh he's a man okay, of his man word. Of word he's man a man of his word, word. listen I, I don't even know what else to say about this map other than New York just running around and doing whatever they wanted. Um, because that's what it seemed like it was. We have a man from New York now in the chat. Asim, oh, oh, Asim, you're allowed to join now. Oh, no. Wait, hold on, hold on. Why are you gonna put this on me, Tom? You you know me. I, it's my tradition. I come in here after every win. You know. You know what that's saying? what I'm saying. You can't drop in for five minutes. What? I think coach? Seem was shook Who was it? Was it Bobble? Was it Coach Bobble? I, I think he's scared of Clay. I'm not. I, wanna I'm say not it. I ain't no snitch, Tom. I ain't oh, no snitch. It was Coach Bobble. It had to be. I ain't no snitch. It was That's Coach Bobble. It had, first of all, it wasn't Hydra and it wasn't Mac. I'll tell you that. Yeah, um, Mac's so, my boy. That's my so duel. it's either coming Here down to Clayster or Bobble, and it's definitely not JP. Clay, Clay's taking ownership in the chat. It's, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, it was Clay. It was Clay. Clay. Yeah. That's fucking pathetic. Clay, that is you know pathetic. Know what, Tom, I, I, I kept this that you threw me under the bus. Did you see your text chat? I said, I said, wait, hold on. This is my tradition. I have to come onto the flank. Uh, I haven't. No, I honestly haven't looked. At, okay, I haven't looked well, at my phone. I haven't well, looked at know, my phone. Fuck you. Fuck you. Listen, bro. It's it's <laughs> been the good luck. You've been coming on. You've been frying. I know it's my tradition, Tom. Listen, I know. But I know. luckily, luckily, you, listen, listen, OBJ, listen. Brian, I was a little worried. Like, if, on, if you didn't join this call, you guys were getting shit on tomorrow. Thank God you joined in here for two minutes. Thank God I joined. I know. Thank God. Because this could have went, dude. The whole thing could have went haywire. You guys could have got smoked tomorrow. So wait, you guys play tomorrow, right? Yeah, I think we have the 7:30 block again. So last oh, match, last that's match tough. of the day. That's Just tough. But, but thank God we're back on form now. We got Asim in here. Even if he wants to leave right now, it's okay. He came on and he said what he had to say. 
Uh, but Ace, you guys absolutely mollywop these guys. There's not really much to say. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, there's not much to say. We're you, just too much. Dude, you guys oh, just really love it. I hate you. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> <I'll take that. laughs> Listen, bro, you guys ran up fucking mid map. Like, like I, I swear, you guys were just doing whatever the hell you wanted. Um. And it, it, I like it because it's just unpredictable. You never know what you guys are going to do. And uh, you guys have been what? mixing yeah, up the S&D a, a lot. Come on, man. Yeah, it's a Tommy Strat, man. When in doubt, just hit something out. <laughs> um, so, so just good plays, man. I mean, Ben, just fast forward through this stuff, man. Yeah, uh, just you go through listen, this. It, yeah, how, it, how much it, did the S&D do me to skip, brother? Everything. Right, they six right, on them. They mopped them. Oh, let's go let's go at least to the last it, round. If you guys want to see uh, New York mop them and, and see what they were doing, then go back and watch it. Obviously, the colleague. Uh, they, let's, uh, let's have Clay with this kill. I know, I know yeah, he was going to Well, Clay's another one. Kill. A first blood machine. I mean, Clay, Clay's another one with the, with the fucking beams, bro. I, I like the angles out of him. Yeah. Look at look at through the crack, guys. The, the Black Ops 2 angle, he said in the chat. Express S&D and Clay is bringing out the angles that he learned eight years ago, folks. Um, definitely love the plays. And Hydra's another one. When Hydra's S&D game starts picking up, which it is, this team's hard to beat. They're well, hard to beat. I actually, a little bit off topic. Here we go. But I don't know if you guys have noticed since, since like the last couple of weeks, they've had used a lot more cooler like like third person angles on the broadcast. Like this is a cool angle. I like it. Up here. This is yeah, a cool like angle. Like All right, boys. Sorry. That's that's it for me. Uh, you're good, you know, you know the vibes. Like I'll see you guys tomorrow after my win against Faze. You know the vibes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Best of luck okay. to you, bro. And also, uh, I like the confidence. A lot of people in the chat are saying you get some chibabi moyes in the chat. Sorry, I don't have the soundboard, but it's okay. In spirit, like we'll all say it in the chat, right? Yeah, yeah. Just drop some moyes in the fucking chat, man. Drop the, on, drop, drop the emotes, man. I appreciate you guys showing love and uh, Ace. It's always a pleasure I, having I you on, bro. I love this show. Keep it up, Ben and Tom. I love you guys, Ron. You know, love you too. Love you too, Ace. Never call me Ron, it's like, Dick. Right, it's it's dick, Compton, dick, right. or dick Compton. Or Dicky C, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll hit up the shit. Dicky C, soon. I like that. I like you know? Dicky C. That's <laughs> yep, good yep, stuff. Yo, when are we hitting up the sheets of GTA again? Like, Listen, I'm, 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 you got major to focus on, brother. Hold on. Uh, yeah, you hear me? Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. First, of all, like, first of all, first of all, Ace's shot is on point right now because of GTA. Facts. Thank you, Tom. So I don't want to hear nothing. His angles are on point. His cameras are on point. His headshots, everything. GTA helps your COD game. I'll the reason why it helps is because it just takes me away from the game for a little bit. You know, yeah, bro. Me, you, lets me stimulate okay. and, and breathe and, <laughs> and peace, you know? And then I hit up the streets and I gangbang. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm like, shit. All right. All right, later, guys. Have a good day. Later, bro. Later. Yo, I'm heated. Clay, Clay just set up cheeks. He said, uh, remember we used to carry this fuck? We used to carry this fuck. Yeah, you used to carry. I don't know carry. what happened. Yeah, I, wish, I wish he was as good as he is I, now. I, I, can't, I can't believe it, bro. And then and then I was talking to Clay the other day, and he's like, thank God you stepped down. You were fucking terrible. I said, Clay, I couldn't move my fucking thumb. That's such a fucking rude thing to say. That was such a rude thing to fucking say. And I built the fucking team. So you're welcome, yeah, yeah. Clay. Come on. You're welcome. I gave you Mac and Doing the shit with one thumb. Clay dropped listen, the point Clay, seven because he got his wisdom listen, teeth Clay taken didn't out. Even want, on, <laughs> listen, no, Clay. We're playing, we're bro, playing with one uh, thumb, Tom. Bro, Clay texts me in the beginning of the year. And, and he goes, who do you want to play with? I said, Mac and Ace. And he said, dude, are you sure? Like, are you sure, bro? This is nice. Or give me. I said, bro, trust me on this. Trust me on this shit. These guys are good. And luckily, Clay trusted me. And, uh, and and look where Clay, look at these guys, man. This guy, this guy, Mac is on a form of his fucking life. Asim's peace, and now you got this French guy, Hydra, coming in doing what he does best. So listen, Clay, so Clay's kind of getting lucky, Tom. Listen, you literally set him up for greatness. I set him up for greatness. Listen, and if anybody ever wants to, in the beginning of the year, wants to build a roster and know how to win, just come to me. I'll give you a roster that you can get, and, uh, and we'll take make the it work. Prize money cut then for the rest of the team. No, I don't need the prize money. I do it for free because I'm a good fucking guy. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so just let me. I appreciate the women's in the chat too. But then we go into the last map, right? Third map. Uh, they end up three on them. But um, New York. Uh, they end up closing out this garrison control pretty quickly as well. I think the yeah. main thing for New York is they come out and they win the first defense, and then once they win that offense, they're able to secure that eight point super fast. Um, this 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 offense got a little mixy. It definitely went down to the wire a little bit. But I think once uh New York was able to close out this offensive round, it was it was it was a wrap. It was an absolute wrap. It was a grinder of a of a round. And the fact that they were able to clutch up just pretty much told the whole story. So overall, yeah. just an amazing series out of New well, York. Let's, uh, let's talk next steps for Florida. They got kind of mega smoked in this series. I saw some jokes from the guys that the you know their, their second series and major starts tomorrow and stuff like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. You don't like that. You don't like I, the X maneuver. I no despise that. They're trying to <laughs> act like they didn't just get punched in the mouth. Like you got body. You got to own up to it. Wait, what did they like say? Kind of I feel like that's almost there's, there's, disrespectful there's a, to there's NY. There's a Sky's tweet, I think, if uh, if you want to dig through it. Uh, though, Florida, so tomorrow, Florida's going to kind of sit around for a little, the first part of the day. They're going to end up playing the winner of the Dallas versus Chicago match. And that's kind of a tough position because the, the team that's coming out of the series will 
have a, a 45 minutes to an hour to breathe, but they're going to be the hotter team coming in. That's going to be a pretty emotional matchup for both the Optic and Dallas guys, and they're going to feel like on top of the world after that match. So Florida's got their work cut out for them tomorrow to avoid getting double rounded here, but if they can get through that series, likely we'll probably see Toronto come through the bottom side. You know, I could see a role where Florida kind of gets a run going tomorrow and makes it a championship Sunday. It's going to be tough, though. I mean, Florida, they, they it's just that ceiling, right? The, it, that's the problem with them is they're either so hot or they're so cold. Um, we just don't know what we're going to get out of them. So I can definitely see them making a run. But at the same time, they went up against a very difficult team. But today, it just looked like they weren't even competing. So I definitely know. I know this team has a lot more in them. That's for sure. Um, but we'll see what team we get throughout the rest of this weekend. But I think that's the story with a lot of these teams. We talk about it all the time. But, I mean, just look at the energy coming from those guys' faces after a big win. You can tell that they're hyped up. Asim's dancing and shit. Clay screaming at the top of his lungs. And it's always good to see Asim doing interviews. They always give Clay the fucking interviews. Um, so I'm happy to see some other players getting some uh, some interviews in there. And to be fair, it's probably because nobody ever wants to do interviews, and Clay's always left uh, doing them. But uh, he's man, such a herb, though, you know. He's a big fucking herb. But what are you I gonna do? I want to get a Hydra interview. That's what I want. He, wait, yeah, a Hydra interview would be comedy, but um, I don't know if that's gonna happen. Clay said, "So I was saying in my cam that we were a sem a semi eighteen wheeler running them over." Jesus, my own Clay. That's uh, uh, gruesome. That That's is gruesome. That is fucking gruesome. Fuck is serial killer. And, and Clay said, "Enable is too cool for reactions." That's what he said, Ian. What are your thoughts? I, what does that even mean? I don't know what that. What does I that don't mean? know. I don't know what that means. Too uh, cool for reactions. It sounds. It, all I, all I'm hearing, Ian, is that you're cool as fuck. That's all I'm hey, hearing. Hey, I pray. I appreciate you it. You know what I'm saying. But let's get into the predictions for tomorrow. We're kicking things off with LA Thieves going up against the London Royal Ravens. Who do you guys got? Uh. This is a tough one. Tough. I really like these. It's been kind of hot and cold as of late. I, I hate to say it for the Thieves, guys. I think their team's really good. I'm going to be Team London again. We're going to say it's a Game 5, another absolute banger series, and London will keep the train rolling here. Yeah, I'm going to go with 3-2. Um... London, Jake had pissed me off with that stupid fucking post and the stop skipping. <laughs> Listen, bro, we're trying to get through the show quick. We don't want to fuck it. So I'm going with London because Cap pissed me off. Cap, you, you just got me my blood boiling, bro. Fuck it. But to be fair, let me actually add some input here. I feel like London's working really well off each other as a team. I feel like they're firing on all cylinders. I feel like they're playing really well off one another. I feel like their teamwork is on point. Now, LA Thieves, they, I, I saw a lot of people giving them flack about their last series, but at the same time, I think everything that Jake Cab was tweeting about was true. Um, I feel like the series was a lot closer than people said it was. Um, so it depends on what kind of LA Thieves we're going to see tomorrow. But there's something about this London team that just is really clicking for them right now. Um, and I'm a big fan of these guys, honestly. So I'm just going to go 3-2 London. Fuck it. I think it's going to be a, a grueler of a series, but I think London will end up closing it out. What do you got, Ian? Choo! Look, all right. Obviously, I want LA Thieves to win. You know, yeah. they're my guys. Um, but I'll be honest, that Florida series, even though it was a lot closer than people think, and realistically, they should have won that series. Uh, Neptune went huge in back-to-back -back maps, map one and map two at the end. But after they played you guys, uh, Tom, NYSL, right, in the regular part of it, mm -hmm. even though they lost, besides map one, the series was very close, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Uh, and LAT played very sloppy then too. But I knew that, you know, New York's top three team, they're a tough team. Yep. So that made me confident in, you know, in the future of the team. But you just, you got to beat a team like Florida. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can lose those those close series to NYSL, whatever. That's okay. You're a new team. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like London looked good. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if London won this series, but I got to go LA Thieves, obviously. Yeah, I want yeah. them to Thieves, do well. Thieves yeah. I got to go with these by a million. I, I, mean, re I mean, regardless, anybody can win this series. I mean, they're two very good teams, and this is going to go down to the wire if both teams are on points. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, but then we go into the next one. Dallas Empire going up against Optic Chicago, and I'm going to kick things off, and I'm going to say that I think Optic's going to take this one. I think uh, Dallas has been looking iffy. Same with Optic, right? They haven't been at their A game. But I feel like Optic got what they needed today. I feel like they're t they showed, uh, a, you know, some signs of life. Um, I feel like their potential is right there. I feel like they're super close. They just need to keep working at it. And I think with a little bit of momentum and a little bit of confidence from today, I think they're going to come out and put Dallas away. Um, dude, I'm like a fucking poet today. Fuck, yo, yeah, I'm okay. crazy. Yo, Tom, yo I'm you're crazy. Absolutely yo, dude, dude, I'm like, bad. bro, that fucking, I'm nasty, yeah, bro. I can't, I can't top that. Uh, we talked about <laughs> this earlier during your watch party. 
Uh, with this matchup, it's probably going to go five games. So let's pick the better S&D team. It's been a big problem for Dallas most of this year. Optic teams have figured out their search game. Uh, so I think, uh, sorry, uh, I think Chicago is probably going to win this 3-2 and continue the ball rolling. And I think on a really good path to maybe somehow, an ex maybe a little inexplicably backdoor top four, top three. And maybe they can run all the way to the grand finals, Tom. We'll see. Yep, 100%. Ooh, what do you got? Al Nables in the chat, bro. Licks. I think Dallas is going to win this series. Okay. But let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I think something that you said, uh, you've been spot on, in my opinion, Thank about you, Optic, right? Uh, Appreciate about you. About the confidence issues. Uh, I know you and Ben were talking about, you know, you think that maybe some of the players are playing for stats, right? Not consciously, but they don't, you know, if things aren't going well, they don't want to be kicked off Optic. Yeah, it's Being how it always Optic is. It is, is a blessing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, for it, sure. it, it adds so much more to your career. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that could be one of the reasons why they're not playing that well. They obviously mm -hmm. beat LAG. I predicted them to beat LAG. I think Empire is going to be a much harder matchup. Yep. Um, so I have 3-1 Empire. Ooh, okay. I, I just, that's my opinion. But I will say this. I will say this. I think if Optic do come out and beat Empire uh -huh. uh, and they get that confidence, you know, they got the rivalry with Krim. I think they can make a, a pretty pretty long losers run. I do. Uh, mm -hmm. They're a team that when they're starting to get confident in themselves and they get momentum, they can beat any team in the game. Let's yep. be realistic. I, they, I, they think, have, uh, sure. I mean, just look at I their think, team on paper. It's yeah. insane. I, I think the matchup, so they're going to have this Dallas series. Let's be honest. If they win this series, I think they're smoking Florida. Yeah. And then likely Toronto is a team that comes out of the bottom. If Optic can win that series, they're going to feel like a million bucks because they'll have beaten a very good Dallas team probably at one point the best team in the game the last couple of weeks and they'll feel like if they've got to play their phaser new york at that point in top three uh they're feeling pretty good in those matchups so um we're gonna learn a lot about optic tomorrow i think for sure for sure and then uh we go into the next match i mean i don't want to talk too much about the toronto and the mutineers match because they don't know who they're playing yet Toronto's that... winning and florida's gonna lose they're Okay, uh, great. Okay, I mean, I, I, I like that. We'll, we'll leave it. At, yeah, yeah, we'll leave it at that. I mean, we just don't know who they're playing, so <laughs> there's no point in predicting. But uh, I like it, Ben. Fuck it. Um, and then we got uh, Atlanta Face going up against the New York Subliners. It's a two T-Mobile five G weekly drop matchup. Um, and you know, I'm going with New York, obviously. So I just want to hear your your guys' opinions and on uh, who you guys think is going to win this one. I'm so excited for this match. I can't wait. I think map one's going to be super key. New York's a really amazing mm. hardpoint team right now. Good word. Uh, for FaZe, they really can't toss away another control like they did today. Uh, that being said, I think this will be another Game 5 banger. Mm -hmm. uh, last time these two teams played, uh, it was a really close raid S&D, uh, which New York was able to clutch up. I think they 3-5 come back on. Uh, I think if we do end up in a raid S&D, I feel a little bit better about FaZe now. So I, I'm going to give it to FaZe just on the sole fact that I just saw them beat Toronto uh today i would really not be shocked though if new york went to series hey, fuck you get out ben get out <laughs> what are you a fucking yeah, fuck asshole you, hey. fuck you you giving me the finger now these days look at this guy yo ian this guy's giving me the finger now ben gets a little clout bro and he forgets what <laughs> okay, bro. He gets a little juice <laughs> forgets who he was drinking water with that's bro what I'm he's saying. Yeah, getting okay, out of pocket okay, that's okay, what i'm saying ian bro wyatt that he goes to my text all the time but it's all good brother ah uh, that's crazy wait, hold on. bro if you've been texting me you got not, the wrong not, number homie not, <laughs> yeah, not, recently, not recently but like, oh, okay. when i did have your number bro you take like two hours to respond to uh, yeah. what's going well, on well i mean i mean i mean to be fair like <laughs> okay Listen, I'm on that relationship. If I need Ian, I give him a fucking phone call. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. I pick That's up the... how you get me, Ben. Yeah, yeah, you don't text if, me. If you FaceTime something... me, you call me, yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah. up. If it was something yeah, super enough. important, I just pick up the phone and call him. That's well, it. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't like to call people unless I text them before and be like, yo, I'm calling you. See, I'm the opposite. Well, like, if, it's, if it's something... I don't care if he's yeah, having yeah, sex. Yeah, 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 I like that. I like that, Ian. Fuck it. What, what, Ben? What, were you going to say something? No, no, I'm the only person I like, my family, obviously, they call, I'll pick up, and then you, Tom, if you're FaceTiming me, I'll always pick up unless I'm at work or some shit. Yeah, you're another one that you know, always I gotta calling. I got to choose out a map over you sometimes during work. That's a little hours. fucked up. Little That's a little fucked up, but well, what are you going to do? you know, I don't want to get fired, so. All right, but let's keep it fucking moving. Uh, Enable, who do you got for Atlanta Phase and, and New York? And guys, please start dropping some questions in the chat so we can get into some questions, but let's hear uh, Enable's um, predictions. Dude, I think this is going to be a, it's going to be up there with the Toronto Phase series today. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, I agree with Ben. I think the first map is going to be huge for both teams. New York, I mean, you 
can't say they're not the best hardpoint team in the game. What are they, 10-0? Mm -hmm. uh, I oh, think crazy with, with 10 and 0. Yeah. Yep, 10-0. Yeah. Um, now, here's the thing. I, I think if New York come out and they win that map, which I guess they have to be the favorites, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have the confidence. That's how all teams are with Clay. Okay? Yep. Clay literally can bring out the best and the worst, depending on w which way it's going in, in his teammates. But I think if they win that first map, they're going to have the momentum. And I could see them winning this series 3-1. I really can. They, mm -hmm. They're a hard point powerhouse. Their control in SND is obviously uh, hit or miss, I guess, right now. Yep. But I'm sure they're, they're trying to, to do things and improve on it. But if FaZe come out and win the first map, uh, I think it's going to be 3-0 FaZe. And the reason is, I think, because New York's riding such a high. Right, right now you gotta you gotta expect that they're in their heads they're winning map one and map four yeah. every series right now. That's just how it is uh, when you're hitting a streak like this. So if they come out, they get punched in the mouth, they lose that first map. I think they're gonna be kind of shook, you know. And then yeah. you have Phase and SND, um, so it's gonna be hard. So I, I think that map one is gonna decide everything. Whoever wins map one will win the series. Yeah. But I think if uh, if it's Phase, it'll be three zero. If they win map one, and I think if New York win first map, it'll be 3-1 subliners. Yeah, good prediction. I like it, Ian. Okay. I like it, man. I like it a lot. But let's get into some questions, guys, to end the show. We'll do the best we can to pick some of the best ones out of the chat, and uh, and we'll call it a fucking day, and we'll be live again tomorrow after the matches. But um, first question that I see, what do you think needs to happen with Paris in the future? Do better or... To do better, or is it chalked? It's definitely not chalked. It's never chalked. Um, that's the problem. If it's people fucking are, chalked, Tom. You, you think it's chalked? Okay, it's it chalked. Might, it might be chalked, Tom. I got to agree with you in here. Listen, listen. In, in terms of like coming out and actually winning matches, I don't think it's chalked. It might be chalked. What, what place are they? Are they in dead last? I'm pretty sure they are either dead last or 11th. Right well, now. that's not good. That's definitely not good. Do they even have a shot? Like, what do they yeah, have they to can. do? Yeah, they can. I mean, they have, they, have to, they have to basically win one of the events at this point. Uh, yeah, and well, really maybe, well. listen. Oh, it's fucking chalked. Listen. Okay, so they're actually their 10th right now, but only 10 points separate them. London and Seattle. London will jump them based on just points alone from this. But right now they are uh, 30 points off of Florida and 8th. We're going to get more than 90 points. So Paris is really going to have to come out and, and basically win or go top two or top three and back to back to really have some kind of shot at making top eight right now. Okay, well, it might be talk then. Uh, moving on to the next question. Does Florida make a change if they get smoked? Um... I don't know. I feel like if Florida gets smoked again, you gotta change the core three. You gotta change one of the core the core guys. Um, you just gotta change it up. Maybe between Skies and Awakening, um, they're both amazing players, but maybe they're just not clicking as a team. So maybe you make a change there. Um, and I think either of those guys will do amazing on on other teams. I think it's just a matter of finding the right guys with the right people. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how Florida comes out tomorrow. They didn't look great today, but they looked great the other day. Um, so we don't know what team we're gonna get tomorrow. So ultimately like ben will say we'll <laughs> see uh we'll see how they come out tomorrow and, and play and then uh we'll go from there um and then the last question i guess we'll end with is what should rocker do well, you why, know I thought on this. wait why is everybody spamming luma what the fuck did i do what did i just say that's I a luma know, I, I, I don't know why people are saying Probably luma. the sky's an awakening yeah, yeah the sky's awakening. i think you're right Bro, it's been inconsistent all year Listen, so uh, uh, all right guys yeah about. sure sky's an awakening is really working guys yeah everybody spamming luma i think it's uh, a great fit and uh i think they should keep it going and they're and 9 and 11 in series this year so it's not working out particularly good yeah for them man the listen it's a play style thing it's not a talent thing it has nothing to do with them individually and how good they are um they're i'm cra saying they're crazy if you think you're if they they think you're wrong about that. I don't know. You're, I don't a know. A thousand percent, they need to swap one of them. I probably, I, I, you probably yeah, swap yeah. Skies and make Big Wake the main if they don't do well. Mm -hmm. but, but, I, but, I, but I also like Skies as a main too. Like, they're just so fucking good. Like, they're both really good. Listen, if they want to keep them together, then at least they got to do something about the other two. Uh, if, if they do bad and they want to keep it together because, you know, they think their ceiling is really high with this team, which I think it is too, then they can keep it together. I think at the end of the day, it's going to come down to them. But if they were to stay the same, it wouldn't bother me. I don't, this is not one, Florida's not one of those teams where I'm like, wow, they need, they definitely need yeah. a change. Where there's other teams that I think they definitely need a change. Um, and I guess we'll just end with that one. Do you guys think Rocker needs a change? Um, and I know Ben talked about it yeah, uh, a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, I thoughts on this show. I don't need to expand on them any further. Um, and, and Ian, I don't want to put you in a bad spot here, but I mean, I feel uh, like I feel like Rocker can use a change. I do. Um, I agree. I think uh, you said it earlier, actually. You and Ben were talking about it. As much as I love Lamar, I team with him. Uh, I know he brings a lot of intangibles. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he's a lot better than 
how he's been playing lately. That's what I um, say. Yeah, he is a lot better than what he's maybe, been doing. Maybe, maybe the the Ramadan thing has you know it was an effect on him not performing well. Mm -hmm. I, I know if I couldn't fucking drink water, I'd uh, I'd be dropping a point three out there. So, but I wouldn't be against trying Major Maniac. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be against. I it. don't think I, I know you guys said about Zinni. I don't know all the behind the scenes, the contract stuff and all that, but you got major sitting on the bench, ready to go. Mm -mm, yeah. 100%. You know, they, they looked, I thought in last major, they could have been a top three team could have been the finals. And it seems like they just lost all of that in this stage. Yeah. So I, I, you can't change Priesta. You can't change Standy. You're not swapping Dylan. Lamar's the only option at the end of the day, if they were to make a move, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd give Major Maniac a, a shot and just see how he does. It's not like the end-all, be-all, yeah. you know? I mean, but, you also have Tom Gravity, too. I mean, he's another one, a, a player from Challengers who can, who can just get picked up right away. I mean, at the oh, end of the right, day. Like the 14-day contract? Yeah, yep, they could do like a 14-day contract. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't know like what this Ramadan stuff because, I mean, no food and no water is a serious fucking thing. Um, and I know Aeson's been dealing with it. And Aeson's been playing really well. Yeah. So it hasn't really affected him too much. But, I mean, everybody's different. It's still something that's really hard to go through. So, I mean, my respect goes out to Lamar just going through that while, you know, going through a lot of these matches during tournament time. Um, but we'll see. I mean, a lot of it comes down to like what I said in the beginning of the show, just how they've been performing in practices and if they think this team is capable of winning. Um, and just, you know, as you're sitting into practices every day, see how they're calming, seeing how they play off one another and uh, just seeing their results over uh, so many different weeks. The, the decision is going to have to come from the Minnesota guys, from the Minnesota coaching staff and uh, the management over there. Um, um, I see it, people saying slasher. Sorry, I just there's zero percent chance that that's that not that, going to that team. That's not not, he, 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 well, he's it's not, not even to. not even if he wanted to, he would. Uh, the only way Austin gets out of LA Thieves is if he just ends his contract because no team is going to take on the size of his contract. Yeah, yeah. No and, shot. And there's right. so many people saying Ramadan is over. Shut the fuck up. First of all, I don't know why some of you guys are rude as fuck in the chat. Fuck shit, you. Didn't it just end? You, you, listen, it just ended. It just ended. What yesterday? Was it, when did it end? I I could have sworn it just ended like a, a day or two ago. So I I'm I'm very confused. It, 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 it second of all, Thursday, why is everybody right? so fucking rude all the fucking time? Why do people have to say dumbass? Shut the fuck up! Did, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Uh, when did it end? On Thursday. So yesterday. Yeah. So you're telling me it ended yesterday, and people are telling me it's fucking over. Shut the fuck up! Listen, guys, fuck you, fuck you. He's been playing on Ramadan for well, how long has it been okay. going on? A month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's been going. He's been playing without food and water for a month. That's hard. That's fucking hard to do. I've been talking to Asim about it. I mean, it's not no walk in the park. It's definitely no walk in the park. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, maybe it didn't have an effect today. It might not have had an effect today, but you know, it's something that we should talk about. It's something he's been going through. We're not just gonna push it to the fucking side. Um, so we'll just end it there. We'll just end it there. Cause now I'm all pissed off. I'm just kidding. I'm just trolling. Let's end the fucking <laughs> show there, though. I appreciate you coming on, Enable. You're the fucking hey, man. You know, I like ultimately, Tom. I just wanted to chill with the boys. I like that, bro. That, you're you're that. always welcome, man. You're always welcome to come in here and just have a good time and just talk COD, bro. That's all we pretty much do. We just chill and and just talk to the chat and give our opinions on some things. And listen, things might get a little you're controversial. Best, you're the best. Appreciate that, today. Well, I appreciate that. Things might get a little controversial on the show, but at the end of the day, guys, it's just a game, and we're just giving our opinions. Even when I was competing, the same with Enable. We've always had negative things said about us. We've had positive things said about us. Um, at the, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not going to come on here and just spit fugues. I'm just going to be realistic. And if people like my opinions, they like them. If they don't like them, they don't like them. Um, yep. at the end of the day, I have nothing respect for every team in the league management, all the players. I think everybody's at the spot they are and playing at the, at the highest level because of how talented they really are. And I think they have one of the hardest jobs in the world. And I think these guys don't get enough credit for the mentality that they need to have the amount of time they put into this job. Um, and it's just like, you know, the, being someone who's gone through it and same with Enable, I got nothing but respect for every single pro player that's in the league. And at the end of the day, I'm just going to call it how I see it. And it's just a game. Um, and uh, I'm, I will never take shots at anybody personally. So please you don't take these things. You these guys to shave, though, Tom. I'm not letting it slide. You're being thank modest. Thank you. Thank you, GM player, thank you put you. them on the dirt. I appreciate that. I appreciate the gas Enable. I appreciate that. I just want to make that clear because sometimes I feel like people attack me personally or, or just call me names and say stupid shit. But I just don't know what you guys want me to say on a show like this i'm gonna be realistic if i think somebody's doing this or doing that i'm gonna say it and i don't give a i don't give a fuck who it is i don't care you could put it, it could be cristiano ronaldo out there playing fucking cod and if he's playing like shit i'm gonna say ronaldo sucks 
um it, it is what it is it just doesn't matter um so at the end of the day to everybody who knows that and and knows that you know we're just trying to run a good show here and just try and give our honest opinions whether people agree with them or not that's the whole point of the show is to debate different topics and give our opinions um so just thank you guys for all the support in the chat and um i hope you guys can understand that but we'll end it there i just want to say to make sure to like comment su and subscribe if you're watching on youtube we're close to sixty thousand subscribers on youtube so make sure you guys hit that sub button make sure to go to uh anchor.fm slash the flank to go check out uh where it's all being played on all these different audio sites make sure to go follow uh the flank at the flank on twitter we just got the original flank Whoa. at so go to at the flank on twitter Go follow the Twitter account. We're going to start posting on there. We're going to get Gersh to start controlling that Twitter account, or at least I think Ben's working on it. But I think the best way to end this show is with Ben giving us a putt. So let's do it, Ben. You know what to do. Get your fucking putter out and sink this fucking thing. You're yeah, to go. You. You're to fucking go. Let's do it. But give me a second because I got to fix your cam. I got to drag you around. Ben, Hold on. Ben, Ben, you wearing gray sweatpants? I Look at this guy, ass. bro. Look at this guy. Ben, did you just show your ass crack on stream? He can't be wearing those sweats, Tom. He can't be. Listen, listen. Got, he you know he really said? can't. He really can't. But let's see if he can sink this putt. He's stepping on up. He's on the green. The pants are pulled up. The slippers are on. Let's see what he can do. He's stepping up. He's lining it up. He's going to swing. And he sinks the putt, ladies and gentlemen. Ben J. Nassim is on a tier of his own when it comes to yeah. golf. Well, Let's get some you, wins Let's... in the chat. That's a good putt. That's a great putt. Ben, thank you for coming on as always. It's always a pleasure. Uh, it's um, a pleasure to be on. Shout out to Enable once again. We'll give him another shout out. Make sure to go, go follow him. Twitter.com slash Enable. Add Enable on Twitter. And go check out his Twitch stream as well. He do be streaming and uploading to YouTube. So go check out his YouTube. And um, just thank you guys for everything. And we'll see you guys in the next one after the matches tomorrow. Have a good fucking day. Have a good day. So handsome, Tom.